Hello and welcome everybody to Roundtable Live for July 13th, 2018. I'm Bear Taffy, joined by Northern Lion, Rockley Smile, Mathis Games. Good Hello. to be back with y'all. It's, it's Hello. Been like, what's it been since? Well, I mean, of course, last been week, week. We had Edmund on. Yeah, but <laughs> it's been a bit since the whole core has been together yet again. It's, it seems to be a pattern, but here we are, good as new, right as rain, ready to go. I love it. We were all here last week. Oh no! I'm. You didn't listen, doesn't Nick. Count. It doesn't count. But we were here. Count, but we were here. last week. But we but were it here last week. We were here last. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Whatever. You guys win. <laughs> it's it's nice to be back for yet another week of Roundtable Live. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We're going to talk about video games and stuff, the industry, what it contains within, and uh, what secrets we can unearth as a group. It's going to be so much fun. Such a good time. <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah. Valve has leaked some information about the uh, player bases of basically every Steam game. Uh, they patched that leak, of course, but it was all too little too late as the internet sucked it dry and immediately uh, pursed through the data contained within. And we'll talk a little bit about what's going on with that. Uh, Mathis is on the rise, uh, or at least his area of expertise is Nutaku. <laughs> announces the world's first adult esports gaming tournament. Oh boy, we're going to have <laughs> Why they didn't reach out to me is I'm confused. Me. Honestly, yeah, like that's a big missed opportunity I'm on there. I'm checking my email right now. Mhm. Mm Nutaku. Hey, man, wait, 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 wait. Nutaku. N U T A K U. Don't act like you don't know how to fucking spell Nut Taku. It. That's it, right? <laughs> the world's yeah, largest English Mathis is on the rise. New Taku, Hente Sex Games Online. <laughs> yeah. I have the New Taku Sponsorship <clears throat> Opportunity email sitting in my email. Really? Interesting. This is a little on the older okay, side. Okay, hold on. I need to find out if I got one. So this what does that entail? Because you can't really stream porn? Right. Uh... You just got to let people know that porn is out there. And, you know, like... You can't tell them where, but oh my at the end Lord. of your stream, mention it, I guess. <laughs> I hope you're well. Looking. My name is Erica, and I'm the PR and media coordinator of Nutaku.net, the world's largest <laughs> English gaming platform dedicated to adult titles. All right, you got the same email. With a growing oh. base of over 50 million monthly mm -hmm. visitors, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Um, <laughs> we are big fans of your channel and feel like you'd be a great fit to represent and promote our brand. Uh, hey, Team Rockley Smile, I'm just following up on my last email. would like to know if you guys want to work with us in, as an affiliate. <laughs> they have partnered with PewDiePie, so. Hey, Bear, my name is Chrissy, and I manage the Nutaku affiliate program. <laughs> yeah, I got Chrissy also. There you go. Games for Players Online. I got Aditi, so <laughs> I didn't get Chrissy. Wow, you really missed out. I know. Oh, man. Yeah. We got to start paying more attention to our inboxes. This is No, I, I, the thing is, that particular email was opened and then he subsequently closed after. It was yeah. not one of those that was, like, never opened. <laughs> Can I ask what the date is on yours? Mine's March April. 6th. Of this year? Yeah. Yeah, mine's yeah. April. Mine was on 420 of this year, actually. July 26th, nice. 2016. Nice. Oh, wow. damn. <laughs> Mine's April 2016. Yeah, maybe a bit. But, Jeez. You know, I could have gotten in on the train early. Dude. Nutaku, this, this if you're listening, I will I will go shoutcast your tournament. <laughs> that would be pretty great, I actually. would fucking do it in a heartbeat. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Give me all the anime titties. All right, anyway. That's... <laughs> We're not actually going to talk about that anymore. I think that's basically the whole story. All participants get a free 12-month Uporn Premium membership. Hey, there you go. That's all the info you needed. Can we oh do a, God, a segment dude. that's what's in our inbox? <laughs> I don't want to do that's that. That's probably not a bad idea. Their yeah. game is called Tits and Tanks. That's exactly! <laughs> I'm so in! <laughs> that's, the, that's like the only game they're playing for the tournament, too. Like The whole time, I think, is Tits and Tanks. <laughs> Nick's weird emails. I mean, they, they've got some better options, I'm sure, on the website. That would be a little bit more classy, right? Let me go have a look at their top tier Wait, is, list here. Tits and Tanks isn't a sequel to War for the Human Tanks, right? Oh, I mean, it, it might as well be, except the ladies get naked. You guys remember that? That was a hell of a game. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they, could be playing, they could be playing Chick Wars. That would be probably a little bit better. Half visual novel, half real time strategy about little girls who are also actually tanks. Yes, yes, I know. Fighting in a war. Talking about. Yep. Whoa. Unlock beautifully drawn hentai scenes. Uh, that's just the. Yo, the trailer <laughs> just has them fucking. <laughs> there is just some fucking in the trailer. There was that... an NSFW tag on this on content. YouTube? So just... No, it's not on Anywhere. YouTube. That's oh. why I should have known. 
before I got into it, but like, man, that I just got a, pay, a page of straight up porn. I just realized is staring me in the face. Right, this is my profession. I guess this is my <laughs> show. Is it okay? New Taku Games. I'm tweeting at them right now. Yeah. Now, I'm sorry, I ignored your out. email, New Taku. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the big news about the tournament. I, I gotta make sure I hop on this gravy train. It's not even that. I just, like, don't think I noticed it. You think you would have actually gotten involved back then? No, but I would <laughs> probably have tried to reply to it anyway. You take one look at Pussy Saga and you're thinking to yourself, boy, did I miss out. Excuse me? At least Pussy I am. Saga. That's one of the games is Pussy Saga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. All right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So that's it's being sponsored by YouPorn. Something we didn't, you know, say. So you yeah, know. yeah. They've well, got some money not. behind. No, no, we're not. Mm, I also yeah. would take that sponsorship instantaneously. Just right. Saying. It'd just be confusing. I think. Mm. Like, Can they fly me out to LA to watch a hentai orgy or something? Because I might be interested in that. Is it right? hentai? That's what I'm saying. Hentai. Is it hentai? I've heard people say hentai before. I've actually never heard that. It's um, really important we get that right too. Right. Hitman 2 is going to have six <laughs> locations at launch. I've tried to pivot to that three times. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much the whole story there, too. Overwatch League coming to ESPN. We'll talk about uh, the future of esports as it's a very growing or a very quickly growing industry. Uh, Mario Tennis Aces, speaking of esports, the new one, the hot new esport in town, Mario Tennis Aces. It's going to be dominant. Uh, speaking of hot new products, the Culling 2, also on the docket for us today, along with Wreckfest. Uh, Cultist Simulator is going to be rounding it out, and uh, we'll talk about what we've been playing this past couple of weeks or so, as well as our uh, June game of the month. And since we're about halfway through the year, we figured we'd do a uh, best of 2018 up to this point as well. So with that all in mind, let's get back to that very first story, which was Valve leaking some player data. Uh, this came to us last week by way of Ars Technica. Uh, they have, as mentioned, already fixed all the issues, patched up all the leaks, but not before all this data got out to the public and uh, people began to, or people very quickly began to parse through it. So, as I'm wont to do, I like to try to, you know, quiz you guys on your pulse of the gaming nation knowledge and uh, see whether or not we can figure out what maybe like the top five, maybe even the top ten games. Uh, based on total player count are currently for Steam right now. Now we have this, okay, okay. normally we're looking at these sorts of numbers that are like compiled from third parties that are gathered from like, you know, Nielsen studies and all the different uh, metrics groups that actually like have to try to figure out what numbers they are. But this is straight from the source. This is Steam leaked this data. This is how many people are on these games. So this is pretty cool that we have this actual, you know, straight from the horse's mouth scenario. Uh, so go ahead and knock out what I know you're going to knock out right away, and let's get GTA to, Five. There you go. Uh, if it's player count, it's, there's got to be some free to play in there, right? Oh, actually, you know what? Having just counted here, you know what? GTA Five is thirteenth. Oh, wow. right? That Whoa. is surprising. Let um, me double check that. Five, ten, fourteenth. Goodness, yeah, God, that's all right. That's shocking. I mean, PUBG is probably still up in the top five. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, yeah. Dota two. Mm -hmm. Counter strike. Yeah. Counter strike. Yeah. Yep. That makes what sense. about Warframe? Warframe made it. Yeah. If you can free to play. Oh, uh, free to play. Uh, there are eight now. As I said, free to play is gonna is gonna bump. I think a lot of games up there. Speaking what of about that, there is Rocket there. League. Rocket League is uh, 20th. I want to say somewhere around that area. So not quite there. They're one of the uh, actually the last one on the list here that uh, is over that 10 million player mark which is a nuts number to consider for a game like Rocket League being, you know, a paid product. You said there's something up there that... What? There's something up there that's getting, like, I don't even know if you guys are aware of this game. I wasn't until Is today. it unturned? It is unturned! Oh, yeah. No. What? That's that, that's that oh voxel online zombie game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah oh, yeah. my. That, it's that everybody's game. little brother's favorite game. Yeah, basically. I guess, yeah. because it's got 28 million players. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's crazy. I didn't even like looking at the logo for this game blows my mind. It looks well, like the game. It was made is, okay, so listen, it sounds insane, but like if you look at when the game came out, the game came yeah. out at the height of or like right as zombie online survival games were picking up steam. Well, it came out in early access at that point. Yeah, that, like, it started in early access, like yep. July twenty fourteen, and it was like decent at what it was doing and then the developer never stopped producing content for it he kept on making more and more 
And mm -hmm. if my memory serves, correct me if I'm wrong, chat, when this came out in early access, the developer was like 16 or 17 years old. Oh my God, seriously. And wow. he's never stopped working on it since then. What? And he, so now he's probably in his early 20s and very well off for the rest yeah. of his life. Wow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's insane. I That's played remarkable. this with Rob for like 10 minutes and we didn't get what the big deal was and then we never talked about it again. You know, you're, you're too old, dude. That's well, the problem. I think, well, it was 10 years old to play it. Again, it came out at a time where DayZ was still super mega popular. So this was a free version of DayZ that kids could play. Yeah. Oh, no. Like, I don't understand what the kids like anymore. <laughs> it's just take what's popular and make a kid version of it. And there you go. Like, I, it's, it's weird to say, but PUBG, Fortnite, you know what I mean? It's pleasant looking it's colorful it's free all the kids are playing it on their tablets in school just take what's super popular among adults and kidify it a bit and you have mm. a bona fide as long as it's competent of course you have a bona fide hit on your hands as long as you're out there early enough wow. is it yeah. me who's out of touch <laughs> no yes. it's the children who are, <laughs> the children who are wrong <laughs> you, you can cut the meme text in half yeah <laughs> no i that i'm not that does not surprise me all right, yeah, no, that's. I guess I'm just the one out of touch there. I, uh, I had um, no idea what was going on with that. Is Paladins up there? You know what it is. Yeah, it's. Uh, in fact, let me double check. I think it's number ten. So right on in there. It's right. somehow maintaining. Yeah, a, f a free version of Overwatch. Like mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yeah, that's you know that's most of the interesting. It's it, yeah, interesting stuff you're gonna find out there. You got Team Fortress Two is at fifty million players totally ridiculous counter strike oh. uh, global offensive also up there at 46 mil uh pub g has 30 nearly 37 million players so i think maybe my reports of pub g's demise have been great well, you say play this is owners not this is owners. Like, no, so yeah, yeah, yeah to yeah. be fair it's not like at all representative of current player base so like it could very well be that unturned only has like a thousand people playing it. i doubt it that would be ridiculous but like just to consider like even if you only take 0.01 percent of 37 million people that's still a huge number you know so it's just like the, the bigger the volume obviously you got to consider like wow there's there's a lot of people that have to lose interest in this for it to go away uh and then uh, beyond that there's not really a ton of uh surprises up there and like even the well robocraft kind of surprised me to see up there too and like the top 20 right above rocket league uh and then brawlhalla is starting to get up there nearing like nine or ten million players there so that's I know uh continued to gain traction that I I still I, I enjoy that we found that in its you know diamond in the rough days. That's it's kind of cool that it's beginning. Well, and you have to put it in context, traction. right? Where like uh anything free is gonna have a huge advantage in terms of ownership over yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything that costs money. Like I'm assuming even chivalry is probably up there because it was free like six weekends out of yep, gotcha. two years that that ran. So like mm -hmm. You know, if something is free and good, it's, it's probably going to be up there. It's more like when you compare games that are 60 bucks to games that are 60 bucks, you get a real sense mm. of, like, how large GTA 5 is. Yeah. And, you know, Counter-Strike is not $50. It's, like, 20 But, like, the amount of money that Valve has made off of Counter-Strike Global Offensive is, like, comical. Yeah. <laughs> Even before you start yeah. to factor in the, the microtransactions and keys and... The thirty percent that they get everything off the marketplace and et cetera, et cetera. Valve has so much money. Oh my god! <laughs> if Valve only was responsible for CS:GO, they would have so much money. But they're responsible for CS:GO, TF2, Dota 2, Steam. Yeah. Wow, they have so much money. <laughs> also, beyond that, you're kind of reinforcing, I think, the point to be made about PUBG's volume of player base because. They're not a free to play game. That's a thirty dollar game still, right? Or like, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's still a thirty dollar game, and people are buying it new still. So it's that's a lot of people that oh. bought that game. It's wild. You're right. Uh, I mean, thirty million sales at thirty dollars each is nine hundred million dollars. Call it and then bill. call it Valve. Cool. Valve takes thirty percent off of the top. <laughs> so. That's like, you know, 200 and something million dollars. 
it, it, <laughs> that Valve made off of PUBG. If Valve alone. just was responsible <laughs> for helping them sell PUBG to people, they would still. Now that's like if a, everybody oh, bought no. it at full price, and there, yeah. there have probably been weeks where PUBG was for sale for less than that. But you know, you got to think that it's up there in like the the hundred million at least range. That's crazy. Huh. Yeah. Now the the points though beyond that as well about the fact that you know any decent free to play game is probably going to make its way up here is pretty valid too. Uh, Skyrim's got 13 million owners, but no one's shocked by that. All right. So there we go. All the fun information we can get from the Steam data there. I'm sure there's more to be derived. Ars Technica's got all the goodies if you want that. A big old list actually. They got like 150 games on here, so feel free to pick through. Uh, let's see here. We already gone through here in the Taku esports, blah blah blah. Hitman Two, blah blah blah. Let's go to Overwatch. The Overwatch League is going to uh, be broadcast on ESPN. It's going to be brought to uh, Disney and ABC properties as well. But this uh, represents a new agreement between the uh, well between Blizzard, the Overwatch League, and uh, ESPN and Disney and ABC, of course. Uh, that will not supersede anything in place uh, between Overwatch League and Twitch. Those things will uh, coexist. So you'll see uh, the Twitch streams as per usual if you've been watching over there uh, on the Overwatch broadcast or on the Overwatch League broadcast. But you'll also see ESPN begin to air things like the uh, the highlight reels and the uh, post match commentaries and things like that. And I think they're even going to be uh, broadcasting replays of live games too. So this is you know. It's sort of weird to me how casually I'm describing this because considering it in a broader spectrum, this would be mind-blowing to me at the age of 13 that we're actually talking about, okay, video game tournaments are going to start be being broadcast on ESPN. Yeah. That's happening. Yeah. Straight up. As a kid, the, the closest we got was G4, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like as far yeah. as video games on TV in general. And mm -hmm. even that was niche, and eventually by the end of their life, half of their airtime was cops. Yeah, <laughs> three runs. <laughs> well, we even got we got a little closer than that too. I mean, like we've had uh, just sort of like one-off gaming tournaments that have been broadcast on the big networks. Like I remember back, mm. Champion uh, the Fire. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there right, you go. Right, it was yeah, on yeah, exactly. cable. <laughs> but <laughs> but I mean, like uh, back in uh, when I was in high school, I remember uh, they had the Halo Two MLG tournaments being broadcast on the USA Network. They actually did like a full TV package for that. Oh, cool. uh, it was really actually pretty impressive, especially for its time. Like it was a really well put together thing that had like 3D elements where they would like replay the scene and like reenact it where people were shooting and throwing grenades and stuff. It was. They put a lot of effort into it, but then, you know, it didn't make any money, so they didn't do it again. But <laughs> uh, this, of course, has a uh, completely different angle in that it has the potential and already has begun to make a lot of money. This is a yeah. very profitable endeavor for uh, Blizzard, for, you know, everybody involved, basically. And ESPN sees the writing on the wall, of course. They're, I mean, like, they're even... To get involved. You know, just anecdotally, being at BlizzCon, uh, they took half the convention center last BlizzCon that I went to, and I assume it'll be the same this year. And it was completely all for or the Overwatch tournament that we were running. And that's mm -hmm. where almost everybody was. The rest of the convention, for like the announcement was full, and then everybody filed away off to the Overwatch, and then the convention was relatively empty for the most part. That's, yeah. It's their moneymaker, which is surprising to me because the game is fun, but I still, as somebody who... Uh, have watched many esports in the past is very hard to follow because there's yeah, just so right. much shit happening on screen but fucking good for them if people love so it. have you guys watched any of the overwatch league i have not no okay. no okay so let me let me give you that perspective because i'll watch a little bit surprisingly uh i think it's honestly like one of the biggest draws to it is the fact that it's so well produced Mm -hmm. because they do an exceptional job with it like everything uh -huh. from commentary to uh presentation on screen like ui elements like they have so many extra factors that make it interesting for a spectator so, and so kind of like a ti for dota yeah sure i mean like i don't even have really necessarily that comparison i've seen gotcha. the i've seen ti obviously but i've not really like they do the like during the game, if a player gets some like a really good play, they'll have stats pop up like of the player and like yeah, you know, oh, he's got all, the path. all kinds yeah, of shit yeah. like that. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, cool. That's the way to do it, honestly. Like ever since mm -hmm. I watched Ti, I was like, oh, if I'm like if I'm watching any sport, I want it to be that professionalized. Yeah, so. I think they're like hyper aware of the fact that yeah, they need that to make sense. this a spectator friendly sport, and they're they're like 
working on that. Every little step that they make, I think they're making incremental improvements continually. Were you going to say something, Nick? Sorry. Yeah, I feel like Overwatch is much more easy to follow as a non-MOBA person, but also I don't know if the majority of people think that. Like, I'm sure Dota gets more viewers, but I feel like it would be more fun to watch Overwatch. Is that... Do you feel the same way? Well, I mean, I think that's a pretty subjective opinion by nature, right? But right, I, guess. I think it's also maybe worth considering uh, for the for the general audience. Let's just say, like, you know, the typical ESPN yeah. viewer, someone who just watches sports, someone who watches uh, baseball and football primarily, and they play video games, but they don't necessarily want to watch esports. But then they see, like, oh, they're going to broadcast the Overwatch League finals on ESPN tonight. Maybe I should check this out. I think that... When you look at that situation, I think if you're looking at that person comparatively watching the, the international, if ESPN were to broadcast that, I think you're right, maybe. I think that like the odds of them being retained as a viewer are a little bit higher for the Overwatch League. Here's a hot take. Ooh. The best esport by far, even though I don't play it anymore, is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Mm, I let, agree, let me count the reasons why. Yeah. It's the easiest of all the esports to understand no because powers. everybody starts on exactly the same page, and the only difference is the guns that you have. Yeah. And the guns are fit in like three categories. There's like bad guns that you take because of the meta game, like you want to save. There's sniper rifles, and then there's like everything else. So yeah. that combined with the fact that it's just like the first person to win like 16 rounds, it makes oh. it really easy to follow the flow of the match. Mm. Whereas in and every match is like fast and the stakes are really high. Whereas in Overwatch or you know Dota for the exact same reason, I feel like if you don't understand like the base level of what's happening, it's yeah. just a bunch of weird superheroes going around yeah. doing <laughs> shit that you can't yeah. really fathom. Is what is it like? If you're like your forty year old grandpa is well, it's a little young. But like <laughs> that's a hell of a anyway. Story. So like you're <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> your 40 year old aunt is watching the uh, well, overwatch like the league and then this weird like buddhist robot says you know pass through tranquility or whatever and holds his arms out and she's like what the <laughs> fuck does that do but if you you're scoped well, in on a dude Mark, grandpa yeah you shoot him in the head and he dies you're like okay i understand it completely yeah yeah i actually agree I mean, that that is probably the easiest to follow <clears throat> Rocket yes, League's up there too. To I mean, it's a it's soccer with cars. I think it's pretty sim simple and easy to understand. Yeah, I I, I do wonder. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter because none of them are on ESPN, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, right. if they put GDQ <laughs> on ESPN, that would be fun. Like, no, because... yeah, you know the uh... <laughs> what? No. I just I like if I was to see Rocket League on like ESPN. Why are you laughing? So GDQ has a long way to go before it's palatable for a normie audience. Oh. Like, like a long, long way to go. That's <laughs> my version of esports. Like, I don't think it's really competitive. I love watching people be really good at games and playing fast. Yeah. Now, and like the general populace, I think, may actually enjoy that too. They just don't know it yet. But we got to present yeah. it to them in a more digestible well, format. I did try to explain to my mom what kill the animals meant once, and that was <laughs> a nightmare. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, shoot, I had something I was going to talk about here. The, uh, well, yeah, just as far as, like, which ones are going to be, uh, more marketable, I think, obviously, Overwatch is the primary contender, uh, uh right now, uh, considering Blizzard and Activision. Blizzard Almost. is a master of marketing. Like, they're, they're a, a juggernaut at this point. Well, before and... even Overwatch came out, people were cosplaying the characters and all that other stuff just because they were mm -hmm. so good at just marketing the personalities and less about the gameplay at that point. Yeah, well, like, and think about that part, too. Like, even the people that watch the internet, well, okay, like, obviously Dota players know who the champions are, but, like, mm -hmm. Overwatch uh, ca casual fans are, like, pretty damn well aware of the characters, and that kind of adds a bit to the allure, right? Like, whereas Dota 2 has a pool of 200 champions or something like that, which is a bit harder to kind of connect with. Obviously, Overwatch's character roster is going to increase as the game continues to evolve, but, like, I don't know, maybe that plays a factor, too. Like, less things to think about, obviously, is going to be uh, better. The simpler, the better, as far as this is con concerned. Um, yeah, anyway. I suppose it's not really a debate at this point of what would be better to see, uh, considering they've more or less decided it for us. 
uh, as ESPN will be broadcasting the Overwatch League playoffs and finals, which are uh, coming within the month, I think. Here, actually, I think they've already begun. In fact, the playoffs, the quarterfinals, have uh, started. And uh, of course, oh, you know the one major factor we haven't even really talked about too, which of course we have discussed before regarding the Overwatch League, is the fact that they actually have cities that they're representing. You know, like that's the I think probably the biggest easiest way to get uh people to connect with an esport to with a sport in general is to identify it with a region or with an area you know just like say oh you know i i don't know if i'm necessarily interested in watching this oh but it's the new york team i like new york but i i could maybe cheer for them just to kind of see what this is all about so yeah and then austin says the yankees are bad and then i don't know what to think <laughs> well i mean the yankees are bad so oh yeah, deal with <laughs> that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't really follow baseball anymore. I don't even. Yeah, like I, I don't. I don't think there's a lot of reason to like them. <laughs> oh. Well, they're from New York, so that's, yeah. There you go. You got my that state. Going for you. Yeah, you got the Mets too. I know. Yeah, the they're Mets more maybe good. representative of your version of New York, anyway, right? The Mets. How so? Well, they're, it's like it's not deep New York City that we're talking about when you're talking yeah. about Nicholas, right? So okay, yeah. There you go. Cheer for the Mets, Nick. Yeah, you're a Mets fan. Where are, the, where, where are the Mets play? I actually don't know. <laughs> Shea Stadium. Shea Stadium. You, of course, you know that. Now they play in City Field. You fucking plebeian, fake fan. <laughs> <laughs> they used to play in Shea Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that is. Anyway, Overwatch League coming to ESPN. That's barrel of monkeys right there. Uh, speaking of which. Let's talk about Mario Tennis Aces. That's a that's a segue, right? Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. Yeah. There, you go. there we go. We got something. Mario Tennis Aces uh, came out a few weeks ago on the Nintendo Switch. Of course, Switch exclusive first party Nintendo game. Ryan. Yeah. How do you feel? So I've probably played like 25 hours wow. of Mario wow. Tennis Aces. Okay. Goodness. Because I had the misfortune. Well, I had the fortune of being like away when it came out. So I got it on Switch and I was like, I can do something with this. Yeah. And then um, I also got sick. So I played like a lot of Switch because I couldn't do very much of anything else. And I kind of think that Mario Tennis Aces is a bit of a wasted opportunity. I don't necessarily want to say that it's, like, actually bad. It's kinder language than you used pre-show. So yeah, I'm yeah, because now I got the watchful yeah. eye of chat on me. Yeah, yeah. But, like, it's, for me, it's not quite what I want out of a Mario Tennis game. Like, the single-player campaign is basically not tennis. It's, like, a, a bunch of challenges in order to level up but you don't really like persistently take the levels anywhere mm -hmm. like I, I beat the entire campaign and mario has leveled up a lot but i don't know why that actually matters i guess it makes oh. it slightly easier to beat the campaign levels it's yeah. not like you take that online or anything like that the single mm -hmm. player is definitely seems more like mm -hmm. an extended training session type thing ba it's basically a tutorial yeah is it and then push you past if you lose a lot like you can build up a level and then beat the level you're stuck on or something i mean i guess but like if you lose on any of the core like mandatory levels in this game you should you should like not seek play help it. basically <laughs> okay like, i didn't know because it's it's that easy some of the <laughs> bonus levels are actually like really really hard but um just to like beat the actual single player game itself is not that tough i feel like the stats don't really have much of a an impact and then the online i really like the tournament style of Me gameplay too. where mm -hmm. like you start and you're you know it's a 32 player bracket and you have to win five matches in a row in order to win so you start in round one, and then in round two, you play only other people who have won their first round. In round three, you play only people who have won their first two rounds. It's really good, and it adds, like, a lot of tension into it. Yeah. But the online in standard mode is not really tennis. It's mm, more of I a agree. fighting game yes. where you do meter management, mm -hmm. and it's not what I'm looking for. Mm. Like, the, basically what the meta is, is you spam trick shots, which builds your meter, then you use your meter to either like send shots that might break your opponent's racket or just send shots that are unhittable and give you points. So like all in all, I think it kind of represents a wasted opportunity in the standard mode. Simple mode is what most people play, which is a little bit more similar to like N64 Mario Tennis, but like simple mode's fine, but it also 
rallies last forever. So I think there's just like a little, it, it's not balanced properly. I think it has like zero esports potential, more or less. And, uh, you know, the more I play of it, the more I've kind of gotten to the point where it's like, eh, I'm, I, I'm just not interested. I Do you have like... any desire to go back right now? Sorry, Mathis. No, no, no okay. I, absolutely not. None? Like, All right. no. See, I don't know. I don't. I feel like simple mode isn't the way the game is meant to be played. Um, I feel like the game very heavily leans on standard mode. And once I accepted that, I'm like, all right, this isn't tennis. This is a fighting game kind of presented differently. I really started to enjoy it because the first few matches online, I'm like trying to play it like a tennis game and yeah. I'm getting my ass handed to me left and right. And I'm like, I don't understand what I'm doing. So I took a break. I watched a couple of videos. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? What what What's going on here? And once people were like, it's all right, basically like what you said, it's meter management. You're doing this. You're doing this. You're trying to be the first to do this. And then here's how you respond if that person gets to it first and you don't, yeah. um, which is like the super the super move. And, can, can I ask you who you main? Uh, right now, I've been using Boo a lot. Um, okay, acceptable. Respectable, uh, right? Bowser yeah. Jr.? Bowser Jr. is a piece of shit. <laughs> I hear Bowser Jr. is unbalanced. I won't. The, the best thing that they did was make it so that you can decline an opponent without having to back out of the whole tournament. Really? I will not play a Bowser Jr. I reached a point where I was like, if the other person's Bowser Jr., I will not play them. It's just, it's <laughs> basically funny. like if you queued up in NBA 2K18 as like the Golden State Warriors, or even if you queued up as like the West Coast All Stars or like the all time best Chicago Bulls team or something like that. It's actually just. He's broken. Mm. So, like, I'll play anybody else, but I won't play Bowser Jr. Gotcha. Is it bad manners to back out of a game, like in a fighting game, where you get the foil to your character and you just don't feel like going through the mental anguish? He's the foil to every character. Okay. Well, say he That's... was only the foil to some characters. Do you think it would be BM then? I don't know. It's like, why do I play video games? Is like to have fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So, oh, yeah. if, if I can back out consequence-free, it's like the same in NHL. If I get my ass beat and then I queue up and it's... uh a team that just beat us. I'm like, I'm not going to queue into these guys again. Why, why, why would I queue yeah. deliberately for like 15 minutes of, of discomfort? Like, right. in, in the few SMB2 games I've played online, I think three out of four of them have resulted in either me or the other person quitting early. And you yeah. know what? It's like, even when they quit, when I'm up like 3 0, I'm like, all right. That's, Dude, that's, that's, that's reasonable. reasonable. On the Super Mega Baseball subreddit, people are like, I wish people would stop quitting games. It's like, if you're up 6 0 on me in the first inning, I'm done. I'm gonna quit. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. You you yeah. win. I'm not yeah. trying to deprive you. Still get the victory. <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to deprive you of the victory, but I'm out. Like I, I'm gonna uh, yeah, queue into. I want to play somebody that I have a chance. The, the, like I'm done proving things to myself at this point. I think. Like I've I've satisfied my own need to uh, uh, check off the boxes of hardcore gamer. Mm. I guess. And that's that's mostly why I feel okay having turned the difficulty down to easy to fight Sigrun in God of War. That You know what? <laughs> it's perfectly acceptable. Okay, <laughs> who, <was> done. <laughs> who is Sigrun? Sigrun? The uh, Valkyrie Queen? Oh, see, so never went oh, back and did all I that. I didn't do that. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Your gamer cred is intact. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. But, you know, back on Mario Tennis. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once, <laughs> once it, but once it sunk in and once I was like, oh, this is, this is a different, this is not tennis, this is a fighting game, more or less, and I went back and played it as such, uh, the matches were a lot more even, though I'm still losing more than I'm winning. But I started having a lot more fun with it because those moments where you out you outthink or you outmaneuver your opponent in in a way, and you have you, you manage your meter in such a way that you have the advantage and can maintain it is really enjoyable and really fun. But if you're looking for a tennis game, I agree with you. That's not what Mario Tennis actually is. Not yeah. at its core. The simple mode, like you said, is kind of Mario Tennis 64 ish. But for me, there's not enough depth there for me to really enjoy simple mode. Um, it's it's the standard mode with the power ups and the, the constant back and forth that really hooks me, and I like it for that. You talk to me in like two weeks, because <laughs> I for the first like six hours I was like this is fun, and then like just the number of times I just queued into somebody that all they did was trade. Like I remember my breaking point was like I played a dude who on the serve walked up like almost exactly to the front of the net. And then as soon as I serve, just flick the stick back so he could trick shot my service on a return and get like 30% of his meter full. And I was like, you know what? They 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 messed this up to they some didn't extent. Test well enough to so, you know, so much of the it. like a yeah. high level competitive mode has become like, and I'm not saying I played it at a high level, but like you so might be much playing, of it is just that, that might be what like, it is. Like you might be 
high enough in the ranks where you're fighting you're facing people that know that stuff and i don't that's yet like, so i'm still fighting stone where you got like four or five competitive decks that you have to pick from right yeah maybe characters that will win i won one tournament and that's like mm. ever ever since then when you win a tournament you can't go into the first round anymore you draw into the second round every time mm. my win rate like plummeted because the first round you yeah. play people that have a much higher chance to not be very good in the second round, you play people who either won their first round or have won a tournament in the past. So it becomes, like, a lot harder. But, yeah, yeah. Dude, it's like, I, the game is just not what I want out of a tennis game. And I don't want, like, a simulatory tennis game, but I do want something where, like, Arcady. shot placement yeah. and, and you know, like, choosing whether to hit it cross court or, like, a line shot is a little bit more important than just, like, deliberately putting yourself out of position so you can flip yourself into a trip shot or a trick shot i should say build meter and then just like blast it right down their gullet do you think nick as a fighting game fan would enjoy it i don't know what nick values in games <laughs> <laughs> so i can't i feel like I, you do a little though. i don't think i do <laughs> You know, maybe all, of, you all of the interest in the culling too has created an existential crisis <laughs> within me, and I'd, I've decided that I, you know, I, you should try it. There's a, there was a free demo. I don't know if there still is, but maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. But uh, mm. I don't even think it's like it's not really a fighting game. It's just got a fighting it's, game element. It just has yeah. meter. You yeah. know, it's not mm. it's not like the same methodology as a fighting game. Like it's it it's like. Most of the gameplay is tennis, but most of the points are solved through meter management. I mean, it okay. even has like a life system. It does have a life system. Like you, yeah. you don't, uh -huh. you can win. You could be behind in points, but if you knock out all three of their rackets, they lose. Yeah, but nobody over the age of eight falls victim to like racket spam. Sure. I'm not trying <laughs> to like offend you if you've died to it. I haven't. Eight, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, saying, like after that's you also played like part five games, you're like, okay, I will just either. Get the hell out of the way if I don't have meter, or I'll slow down time so I can respond to it. So, mm. cool. All right. Well, anything else, Mathis? You seem still pretty I'm positive good. on it overall. Willing yeah. to give it some more time? We'll, we'll see. Maybe in a month or so, I'll look at it differently. Mm. You know, I'll be really do that. The way they set it up and the way they promoted it, that Mario Tennis might end up ultimately being a racket. <laughs> So what I was gonna say is that <laughs> I feel like it has like no esport potential. I agree, and that's not just a rail on Nintendo. I just think it's not gonna be like very watchable with the game in its current state. And then the secondary thing is people are like, "What do you want out of a Mario Tennis?" Well, like, I don't think the game is terrible, but like make the single player campaign more of an RPG, like yeah. Mario mm -hmm. Golf, or just make it like tournament based like mario tennis mm. 64 was because like the the campaign represents a real wasted opportunity I but think. there is computer tournament you can do with different cups like in mario kart Marsh yeah there's, cup, there are, cup, there are three kind of different cups that you can do it's yeah. true but it's like the other thing is and i don't want it to be again like a simulation or arcade tennis experience but the fact that matches are i mean online matches take like four minutes like there it's mm. One of the game's strengths, I think, that games happen quickly. But if you fall behind early, like, you might as well just back out, I think. Or at least, like, mentally give up. Because it only takes eight points to, to win, I think. I don't know. It's been, like, two weeks since I played. But You heard Northern Lion. If you ever fall that behind early, just mentally give up. Well, Mario here's the you know at Wimbledon this week. You there. That's all you want. At to Wimbledon say. this week, <laughs> Roger Federer had a match point. And then was able to lose somehow, clutch defeat from the jaws of victory. Yeah. Mario Tennis Aces is just like, well, someone's won eight points in a row, they win. Yeah. All right. All right. Fair enough. Mario Tennis Aces, it's out on the Switch. It's uh it is sixty dollars, I I assume as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh Not speaking just of the, the balls in your court now. Hey, <laughs> May not have <laughs> talked much during that segment, but when you did, boy, did it count. <laughs> um, keep talking about games you love, Ryan. The Culling Two. Yes. Wait. So, I mean, before we go like, in, did you see the Culling Two tweet from an hour ago? <laughs> no. Oh, dude. No, I, I, I linked one. it. I linked it in the Hold Discord. Up. I linked it in All the right. Discord. You I'm can look at it. Now. Don't. I have their Twitter account bookmarked, so I don't need the link. <laughs> oh, it's just everything. Oh, being, no. it's a, this is fine. Everybody on oh. fire. Oh my God. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Okay, so like. <laughs> 
Oh no. Don't be tricked by this. <laughs> you should have sympathy for the people that work at this company, but you should not have sympathy for the company. And I mean this sin sincerely. Yes. Yeah. On this show, we've said fuck you Ubisoft for selling cosmetic microtransactions. You know, fuck Blizzard for loot boxes. Fuck Blue Hole for selling No Man's skirts. Sky. God damn it. No Man's Sky <laughs> devs should be in jail. You <laughs> name <laughs> it. shit here over Zavian. It's it's hypocrisy because this <laughs> literally the culling too is like it's a mo it's it's, a mess. it's, it's the, culling Lear. It's the most cynical and naked cash grab in history. And even yeah. if it is there to save the studio, we did exactly the same thing for Radical Heights. Nobody was on the show going like, oh, I poured one out for Cliffy B. I'm so sad that this Cliffy B is going through hard times. Well, Everyone I mean, was like, to be fair, when the studio actually shut down, that is what we did. But during but the actual I discussion did. of Radical Heights, we were like, well, no, not for Cliffy B, obviously, but like for the team, it's the further. I agree, but that's like a, the yeah. implicit level of human sympathy is yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't want the janitor at the Zavian office to lose their job because the culling two is a piece of shit. Right. But like simultaneously, I, you know, it deserves, <laughs> the culling two deserves maybe not to kill the company, but like the company, they made a tweet that was like, it's time for us to close in and do some real soul searching. And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because here's the problem with the culling two. Okay, there's Everything? about a million problems with it. <laughs> Calling one, people already thought was kind of a mess, but it had a unique approach to Battle Royale mm -hmm. that some people, myself included, enjoyed. The Calling 2 is literally, fuck all that, we made H1Z1, yes. released it, not free to play, but for 20 bucks. You need 50 people to have a game. There's only two people online at any given time. There's gasoline, but no cars. Half the shit is untextured. It's just like, literally, they were like, all the goodwill, if we have any left from the culling, we're going to squander by just releasing this. It's basically an H1Z1. Club. Yep, it is a third-person mm -hmm. cartoony-looking H1Z1 with uh, half the things working in it and half of it being a glitchy fucking mess. It's hideous. Uh... It ba like the 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 simple little things for entertainment, like going prone on a cone, was yeah. just hilarious. Prone on a cone. Ooh, prone like on a cone. <laughs> um, the gunplay is awful. Like just the way the guns feel it and how so bad. It it's not fun. It's not enjoyable whatsoever. Uh, it's all just a mess. Every time I saw Ryan die before I jumped in, you always like glitched into the ground and then got shot out into space. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> literally some... every time. I really can't stress enough. There is no reason to play it. No, whatsoever. It's, it's awful. That's it. Let me. And it, I, and it I, took I, me like ten minutes to even get the game to boot up properly without it saying I'm crashing. I'm crashing. I'm crashing. I need you to respond to this positive Steam review, though, Ryan. He's got yeah, four okay. hours. He's got four hours in the game. Okay, I'll, first off, I'll tell you, two and a half at least is just in the pregame lobby, waiting for people to fill it up, but sure, by all means. You've, you've gotten a preview of this already. I've been looking forward to the Culling 2 for several months. Right. This game is pretty cool and has lots of potential. Mm. I just wish that the, the butt hurt folks out there would actually give the game a chance. It is really good. That's the thing. Regard the other reviews and judge it for yourself. I bet the people that have been working very hard to delve yeah. this game yeah. would appreciate you giving them a fair chance. We need these great indie studios out there making great games. I fucking Respond. guarantee Dave this from same QA. this same guy. Even I don't think he's a dev. What I think it actually is is the guy that's like. Far Cry 5 is a piece of shit. Oh, I hit my game crash one time. These AAA devs can't. Everybody else that likes it is doing it wrong. And then this yeah. one, he's like, oh, I see my opportunity to distinguish myself <laughs> by breaking the circle jerk I and being be. the only guy <laughs> erudite enough to explain why I love the culling 2. If you weren't just so butthurt about it, man. Like, he I could just, be I the culling would... 2 YouTuber. There you go. I mean, he has like more hours than the rest of the community combined. If he has four <laughs> hours in the game, even yes, even the devs, like the day after they release their game, are like, "Hey, we fucked up really bad." But this guy's like, "No, you didn't. No, you don't let the we hit need pieces. <laughs> don't let the hit pieces get you." You know, it's like, it's out how's of the control. melee combat? I don't know. Is there melee it, combat? There is, there is, there is combat. melee combat, but there's also guns. It, yeah, I, I can't stress enough. It's almost not possible to criticize the game itself because you just can't play it 
Yeah. And, and the like, game is a lobby, is what it is, yes. more or less. Mm. And the things that made Culling unique are just like you said, Ryan, threw them out. Like, there's no funk, there's no crafting. It's run around, grab a tier one to tier three helmet, a tier one to tier three vest, a tier one to tier three backpack, guns and ammo, run around and hope you find someone before they find you and shoot them. Well, I mean, that sounds like PUBG, but... But that's what it is, but that's the it's, point. It's like, H1Z1. It's, yeah, it's yeah, H1Z1, yeah. it's PUBG, it's not what made the culling unique in any way. And I yeah. agree, like, the culling one, while not perfect, the early days, before they fucked with the balance, was silly and fun, and, and you didn't need 50 people. You only needed, what was what was the cap, 16? Uh, uh, for Yeah, for the culling one, it was 16. Yeah, and, it, and, and it's, that served the game well, I think. It's actually, and we've said it many times, but it's mind-boggling. Because if they had just taken the culling one and re-released it. Yeah, relaunch. Mm. It, or even like come out with a culling two and make it free, it would yeah, still dude, suck. I am blown away <laughs> that it was twenty dollars. That's the thing, dude. How is it not free? That's if, the easiest decision on the planet. Right now, like there are there's a glut of free kind of shitty battle royales that yeah. at least thousands of people play because they're free and they're not PUBG and they're not Fortnite. This has oh. a name behind it at least. If the Culling 2 came out for free and at least, I mean, it would obviously have microtransactions in it because I'm assuming yeah. this was like a Hail Mary to try to save the company, but like it would have a few thousand players, I think. And people would be like, it kind of sucks, but, but at it's least free. it's variety there's a chance that it could save the company and maybe it'll get better the in the future. So they might make changes that are exactly. like it. In, yeah, exactly. Like the, that. the decision to release it at twenty dollars has torpedoed the game because a it's bad. It's not worth twenty dollars, and b literally nobody else can actually play it now. Like I, there there are not enough concurrent players online to play a game, so I it's saw, a non-functional product. I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, uh, but I saw a tweet that said concurrent players and calling two, two. Yeah, it's got it's been at zero a lot. Yeah, it's so zero, yeah. literally zero. We, oh, is it really? Goddamn. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Uh, here's a theory. The one really good part of the game is the logo. It's a really <laughs> good logo. Yeah, because yeah, it's I'm got the two too. as the L. Yeah, yeah, yeah I understand. Is the L? It's pretty good. So maybe that was the entire motivation. I, I, I wow, said this, that's a damn good logo. I said this while I was playing with Ryan, but like the graphics kind of remind me of like Guys of the Wolf from like many years ago. Like it's that bad, it's ugly, mm. like 2006 cell shaded style. Yeah. Uh, it's just hideous. It's yeah. just a hideous like, game. Even just looking at like the, the assets on the Steam page, like the trailer, if you pause it right at the start, look at the corn. It looks like it's from a PS1 game. The ga it's ugly. It's just everything about the game is bad. And I it reeks should, of desperation. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, I should Nick. jump in and qualify my opinion here. Uh, yeah. My curiosity about the game wasn't so much enthusiasm or positivity. It was that I didn't really understand how a game could be released that's so out of touch to the extent that I wondered if people were missing something. And I get it that they weren't, but I just kind of wanted to understand exactly what happened. Like, mm -hmm. I wonder if they'll do a post-mortem of this, because I, other than the idea that they were just releasing what they had because they were, like, counting the days before they have to turn the lights off in the studio, I can't think of a lot of other reasons that this would happen. That's, that's what it feels like, right? It feels like a desperate move of, like, you know, Culling One was a, su a pretty big success right when they launched and they fucked it into the ground. Yeah. And now they're like, well, we need to do something or we close our doors. So Culling 2, maybe we'll ride the what little good press is left of that and try and get like a second game out there and reignite it. But my this, guess is like they ran out of time and money and they needed to get it onto the store it, now. I just, actually understand because it is unfathomable. Like yeah. for a company that has actually released two okay products to be in this situation and come out with something that is this much of a failure I totally is forgot. incredible. And they only it's actually, just announced it. I had no idea it was coming out this soon. Yeah, It's like The Last Airbender, the, the film. It's basically like, how did so many people that have previously like come out with a real working product fuck up so badly? Mm -hmm. Like, did no nobody was like, don't do this? Or maybe like, do it differently? Mm -hmm. I just, I, even... Why not the only access? Thing it, the only thing it points to is like, complete... 
I mean, desperation, obviously, but also like corporate mismanagement that whoever is actually signing the checks at Zavi and is like, we got to make this 20 bucks. I have to imagine yeah. many people at the company were like, can we at least just make it free and yeah, sell yeah. things in the game? Because nobody's going to buy this for $20. So I was seeing that there was like malicious intent being thrown around by people making random observations. I really don't think it was malicious. I think it was I think utter it, confusion and chaos. I think it's malicious intent to some extent. Yeah. At least like negligence bordering on malicious intent. I mean, if anything in the game industry is malicious, I think releasing what is essentially amounts to a non-functional game at a premium price comes pretty close. I wonder Especially, the malice might just be the higher ups, uh, you know, doing something to the, the people that made the game. I mean, it's almost even worse because it's like, it's a sequel to a game. So they're nakedly like using whatever reputation and prestige they have from the culling one, completely changing it. And then also all the other stuff added in over top. There is like, not like yeah. there's no there's no comparison between the two the, the two games. Agreed. Like there's nothing in Culling One that made its way into the Culling Two to even say, hey, look, it's a sequel. Like it's a wildly the different still game. In it. I I heard sort him of. <laughs> kind of in a, at a distance at one point, and that was. Is it. he still in the Culling One arena? And yet <laughs> 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 he's still shouting out like <laughs> commands. Uh it's such a weird situation. Like, I would love to know what happened behind the scenes. I would love to know. Yeah. It, this is almost the sort of thing where, like, the company should not be allowed to make games anymore. If this kills Zavian, I have sympathy for the employees, but no sympathy for the corporation whatsoever. Because I'm with you on that, yeah. It's, it, this is the worst. It's just the worst thing. Mm. <laughs> it, it's, it's fundamentally, like, actually the literal worst game that I've played in maybe five years. I, I just noticed this. The most popular user-defined tags for this product are memes and psychological horror. Right. It's, it's worse, <laughs> and I'm being sincere, it's worse than Revelations 2012. Like, it's that bad. <laughs> Good lord. Yeah, this is just... It's an unmitigated disaster that they're fully aware of, too. Like, that's the the most ridiculous part, is they're actively engaging their audience right now. They're not pulling a, a you know, Zero Dark Thirty like No Man's Sky did after release, where they were trying to just go under the hood and fix everything. Mm -hmm. They're like, whoops! Uh-oh! We <laughs> Dude, I loved the tweet where it was like, well, hey, everything went fine on launch day, right? Ooh, we'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, There's nothing right. to try. It's just dead. Like, what? You, unless you're coming out with a new game tomorrow, like you accidentally shipped the wrong, <laughs> we'll the wrong the version. version tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, like you uploaded the rough copy or something instead of like the. What do you mean you're gonna try Fucking again game tomorrow? Put up the wrong DEXE on Steam again. That's like me right. being like, oops. I'll have a six pack tomorrow. Like it takes time to make those sorts of <laughs> oh. gradual changes. You can't just go <laughs> just like look from down, spare like, oh, tire to six pack. You I know? got up. Yeah, all right. Whoops. Yeah. I uh, gained some weight. I guess I'll just do some push ups and I'll have a six pack tomorrow. But like, anyway, I'm almost like, this is how you know the company's fucked is because the official calling Twitter account is not saying like, hey, we're sorry. They're posting the gif They're, of everything yeah, on fire yeah. and they say this is fine. Man. You set the fire, though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> was this an April Fool's prank? Official calling to Twitter. I wish. I <laughs> wish. Dude, have you seen the stream that, like, the Japanese guy accidentally lights, like, his whole apartment on fire? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what this is. Mm -hmm. And it's then him being like, why is everything on fire? <laughs> why is everybody always picking on me? It's because you tried to put out the fire. With like dry wood shavings, of course. <laughs> what do you think? I, I knew we were fucked. By the way, when I tried to play the Culling Two on stream on Tuesday, and it didn't exist in the Twitch database, I was like, oh, this <laughs> the, oh. the first game sold like I don't know. It probably sold like fifty or a hundred thousand. It did pretty well, didn't it? It, it like, was popular-ish for a while. For a while. Yeah. Then I typed in the Culling, and it was like, "Do you mean the Culling?" And I was like, "Oh no, uh oh, Culling Two actually does not exist." Mm -hmm. That's well. I mean, I literally, does it now. my yeah. my legacy in the culling too is one kill, and it's Ryan, and I'm happy. With yeah, that. you did kill. Nice. Me. That's fine. <laughs> I still, by the way, I've not refunded it, but that's another. That's another. It story. doesn't appear in Steam Search anymore. No way. It does for me, does but maybe because I own it. I yeah, that would be wild. I don't own it. Let me see. I, I mean, I search. Just don't put the culling I I put I, the culling with there. the Arabic numeral too. Oh yeah, it's, it's right there. It shows up. Yeah. Okay. 
That would be a massive change. Fake news. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I, um, I mentioned this on my stream yesterday, uh, but Ryan, I, I, I did want to say the fact that, like, this does begin to give me a lot more faith in the consumer in general, you know, because we talk a lot on this show about uh, whether or not Steam has an issue with garbage games or with being able to weed out what uh, is not worthy of the gamer's time. And I think this is a pretty prime example of the fact that the gamer is able to decide for themselves what is worthy of their time. They have, you know, announced uh, in resounding fashion that this is not. And, yeah. you know, like this is kind of going to set a bar, I think, of, hey, we're aware of the fact that you're trying to do this now. And this is a pretty blatant example of it. I mean, like Radical <laughs> Heights almost pulled the wool over some people's eyes. It was like, OK, maybe this is kind of fun. Don't name names. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> like. <laughs> but this is just so it's it's so blatantly obviously a cash grab that can that, that really has few redeemable features apart from the logo which again top notch but yeah it's just it's a bit of a trash fire so you know by their own fucking admission on twitter so well, this is why like to uh, some extent and, and I know Nick will disagree with this, and that's fine. There's a lot of people that do. But when we spend – and we're almost being hypocritical right now. But when we spend Probably. time, like, lamenting the fact that Steam has, like, asset flips and then, like, some days 12 games come out that are, like – you know, I don't know. What was uh, – on Thursday, it was, like, wife couple, dog couple, fish couple, mermaid couple. They're, like, a bunch <laughs> of games that are exactly like the same. Nailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, all that stuff coming out. You know, I don't necessarily think it's good for the Steam ecosystem, but I do also think that, you know, the amount of money made on those is nearly zero. So, like, mm. and, and it's true for the calling, too, as well. Like, we've I've talked about the game more than I was even able to play the game, but I think it's noteworthy just because it's such this is like a once every, I don't know, three or four years kind of debacle. Mm -hmm. Like, this is yeah. it's just so mind bogglingly like the perfect storm of everything negative. The fact yeah. that it's a battle royale is so hilarious because it's like the at the epicenter of cynicism and also it sucks and corporate mismanagement and no players. Like it's a direct ripoff of H1Z1, you know. It's just, there's it's so a, many things wrong with it. It's, it's hilarious to talk about, at least until the company Everybody gets down. their own helicopter. <laughs> yes, and that's true. If a battle royale <laughs> ships with no players, is it real? <laughs> oh wow it's, it's just a landscape it's just <laughs> just exists no one no drops there. out of the, the airplane the and plane the just keeps flying on by man <laughs> oh that's weird do you think if steam raised the submission cost to like 500 or a thousand dollars per game would those dog couple cat couple games completely disappear but yes. okay i i think they would but i also think like and this is me being the knee-jerk, like, reactionary. But I think no matter what Steam does, it's always going to trigger a Twitter argument. Because, yes. like, if they make it a dollar and then it gets flooded with shit, people go, well, this is making it hard to get exposure. If they made it $500, people would be like, oh, it's just another example of Valve, you know, making it so oh. only people who are already rich have the privilege to get their game on Steam. And, you know, the marginalized indie developers now... They maybe they have to take out like a micro loan to get their game on a platform where it might not even succeed. So like it depends. But if there's less crap on it, then the micro loan would be worth doing. I don't think so because I don't think anybody's buying Egg Couple. I don't think Egg Couple is taking away a sale from like a genuine indie game. That's why the Calling Two failed. They tried to compete with Egg Couple. I just want it to not exist. I guess <laughs> <laughs> just no clutter. I just want to see good stuff. Well, not every game is going to be good. I know that. Are you thinking of but Steam? Yeah, from way back in the day. When, when you see those lists of stuff that's just like, here's puzzles and it's 800 pictures of animals and there's five or six different games of it and it's just the same crap. Like This is what people want. Have that there? Like, that's all I can really say about it is we, we talked about Greenlight as it was coming up and changing mm -hmm. and then eventually just became like an open marketplace. And people were like... We, we, the thing is, everybody wants only their game to mm -hmm. be like the cutoff. No, nobody wants to be like everything's allowed because my game's at the bottom of the barrel. 
everybody wants yeah. like i think it should be restricted but i also think that my game should make it in it should be hollow knight and also somehow <laughs> gears or god of war for people <laughs> on there. that should be all of steam that's it. That's all we need. It's a reductive argument, but I'll stand I just, behind it. I get annoyed because, like, every time Steam <laughs> makes a change, that, like, it just starts the same arguments over and over. So Steam makes a change that is like, hey, we heard you, and we want to provide an experience that's uncurated by going to, like, the unfiltered list. And then here's an experience that's curated. Only games that have a certain amount of notoriety make it onto this popular new releases or new and trending or whatever it's called. And then people were like, Steam is trying to suppress games that are not already popular. And they're like, you know what? Fuck it. Everything is now available on Steam from Egg Couple for 45 cents to, you know, $60 triple-A games. And you can just sort it out for yourself. Because, like, I understand why Valve is taking a laissez-faire approach to this situation. Because, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying, like, oh, please have some sympathy for the corporation. But, like, no matter what they do, some people extrapolate into the worst way possible there's no point in them doing it anyway it doesn't gain them anything to you know find what's the most workable solution to that they they're all they're doing is trying to gain good pr and like, like they have the discoverability queue that takes into account what you own already and then provides you with recommendations that are basically personalized and people are still like the game that i like sold less copies than i think it should mm -hmm. so I don't think five hundred dollars is an unreasonable amount if you're making a serious. No, production. I don't either. But there's people that do. There's a lot but of people. The idea do. being, if you have no budget because you're just trying to make nonsense, the idea that you have to spend five hundred dollars, nobody's going to bother because it's just too big of an investment to lose on. But apparently, a hundred dollars is enough to throw a you know. Yeah. So how does that work? Are these people all taking losses on Egg Couple? I think that's I think plausible. It's yeah, one hundred dollars one time. Though, well, right? it's and the other thing is that like um, you, it, it's taken out of the sales that you make of your game. So once you get that fee paid, and I don't know if Steger's here. You can correct me if I'm wrong. If they're even allowed to talk about it, but I thought the way that it worked was kind of like you know you pay it, but then also you get refunded by the sales that your game makes. Oh. So eventually, if your if your game crosses that threshold, you would make the money back. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Interesting. 10 out of 10. This game <laughs> Calling to. gives us a good look on what modern day weapons are like. I don't understand why you can't kill the other players. I spent my four hours with six other players and we ran across a football field. That is, that is, that is the waiting area. <laughs> four hours. It's a 10 out of 10 <laughs> recommended Incredible. review. Uh, that's good. <laughs> All right. The Calling 2. It's available now if you want to spend 20 bucks. Uh, let's move on. We got a good game to talk about today. We got Wreckfest. Nick, want to talk about Wreckfest? All right. Wreckfest is a destructible car driving game by the, some of the developers, if not most of the developers, behind Flat Out, who may have been some of the developers behind Destruction Derby. I didn't quite follow yeah. if that was necessarily true, but I'm going to trust Ryan on that one. Um, so it's the people who were at the origin point of, I have a car, I want to crash it into stuff before Burnout. Mm -hmm. and all of these years later, after we called it Next Car Game for years, it turned out to be called Wreckfest. And now it's a fairly passable, uh, online capable, uh, crashy car game. And so we played a bunch of it and we crashed those cars and we had a pretty good time. Crash them good. It's yeah. not completely bug free. Uh, there's some issues and some polishing that need working out. But on the whole, I'd say they set out or they accomplished what they set out to do originally. And we all had a pretty fun time. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Right on. I think that Wreckfest is actually you can't really, keep really like good. Re Breakfast. Wreckfest? Yeah, then I just I get hungry. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. He's not calling it French toast. He's saying Wreckfest, though. That's mm, yummy. Next car game is very good, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. I've been playing, like, the multiplayer is good. It has UI quirks and, you know, for 24 people to all have to ready up to launch the game and have no, as far as I know, no like admin access to just launch the game even when people are unready is a little bit annoying. Those are kind of like quality of life problems and the actual gameplay itself is really good. The multiplayer is great, I think. The fact yeah. that there's like, like the, the variety of races is good. Like there's folk racing, which is just like race and you kind of bump into each other. There's banger racing, which are tracks that are designed to essentially facilitate 
collisions. Like you don't need somebody driving around in reverse. You actually, they have like figure eight courses where the path crosses itself. So as people get further on in the race, they're almost guaranteed to have to cross traffic that's coming from the other direction that's slower than they are or faster than they are. Mm. Then there's like demolition derby style, um, you know, basically deathmatch or last man standing where you just try to beat the crap out of each other's cars. It's just really fun. It also has a Steam Workshop support that has a bunch of uh, like custom tracks that get a little crazier. And uh, I mean, I've been playing the single player as well. I think the single player is pretty good. I don't think it's a 10 out of 10 racing game. Like if you're going to play exclusively the single player, I think it's uh, probably not worth $45. But uh, if, if you're going to play the multiplayer, I think it's a relatively easy sell despite the high price, honestly. Well, we talked Ooh. about the crew last time and I was kind of hesitant about that, even though the ambition level was pretty okay and it has a lot of cars and stuff like that. The main issue with the crew was I felt the handling was just kind of off. Yeah, And I don't feel that way about Wreckfest. It mm. feels pretty okay to drive in that one. Um, I felt like the weight shifting felt modeled correctly. Uh, if you want to try and play it seriously and pick racing lines like people do, you can pretty much do that, and you probably won't get frustrated with it until you know 50 people hit you going around a turn. But yeah. that's not anyone's fault. That's just the game you bought, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Like, it is frustrating. What irritates me in the game, and I feel like I came across badly when I said it on the NLSS, it irritates me when there's people in the lobby that just deliberately are like, I'm going to smash your car. Mm. And I, it's weird because that's also kind of the game. But you're going to die most races anyway just from racing normally. Like, if somebody wants to pit maneuver or something like that, that's cool. But if somebody is just like, I'm a bus and I'm going in reverse, that's where I'm like, you don't need to add your own Zane. The Zane is already implicit. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not subtweeting Corey. Corey's an honorable racer. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I would um, say our, our issue with that is just we need to curate only the people we want to play with. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Control the people that we're getting in sure. there. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I think it, it does allow for that too, right? I think breakfast is like... It, it The best thing I can say about it is that it's kind of inspired me to want to play more racing games again. Like, I used to play a ton of racing games, and now I'm like, dude, maybe I should buy that, like, Forza Windows 10, where it's, like, half Hot Wheels or something like that. Yeah, that like, looks I think really I, cool, actually. Yeah. If, it sucks that it's on the Windows Store exclusively, but, like, apart from that, I'm like, I mean, now I'm sad that, like, apparently the crew, too, is not very good. So, uh, right. but, I'll yeah. I'll play Dirt with you. I love Dirt. I don't. I want to play a new racing game because I am a trend chaser. Do you like rally at all? Not really. Oh, okay. But if they you come like... out with a new dirt, I would probably play. They it. always do. There's like so many of them now. Although I didn't think four was all that great, is what I heard anyway. Mm. You liked uh, PGR back in the day, dude. You? I love Project Gotham Racing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, that company was purchased by Microsoft and then used to develop a half-assed James Bond, Daniel Craig movie tie-in game that oh, murdered them because mm. it is, is a suicide assignment. It's like, hey, yeah. let's, you're going to make this game that nobody wants to buy. Nobody bought it. Uh, we're shutting you down. Whoops. Whoopsie. Maybe it was Activision. I thought it was EA, though. Or, sorry, I thought it was Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Well, if you get inspired to play new racing games, you can include me in your antics. Absolutely, yeah. When's the, new, when's the new Forza coming out? Sorry, when's the new Forza hit? They usually, they do like one a year now, right? Like, the only problem is it's going to be Windows 10 exclusive. I if have it now. Any attention yeah. during the uh, Xbox conference, I'm sure <laughs> yeah. we'd know. No, I was forced to change to Windows 10 recently, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Wreckfest is $45, uh, but apparently worth it. It's a, it's a high recommendation I'm hearing from you two, so good stuff. Fairly new as well. Uh, yeah, it also, came out in June. Yeah. The, after being in early access for like five years. I was going to ask a that. A long yeah. time. It's been yeah. a long while since this one's... Uh, entirely forgotten about it. I didn't think it was ever going <laughs> to come out, and then all of a sudden everyone's talking about it. I'm like, all right, let's, yeah. let's do it. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, let's hear about Cultist Simulator, Mathis. Oh, yeah, sure. So, mm -hmm. Cultist Simulator... Uh, let me change the topic real quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cultist Simulator is a new game out on Steam from the devs of uh, Endless... Sunless Sea? Sunless, Sunless Sea. Sunless yeah. Sea. Um, and the idea is that it's a card game where you're playing an individual who stumbles his way into starting a cult. Um, 
the the gimmick, if you want to call it as such, is that the game does not tell you how to play. There is no real tutorial outside of some incredibly bare bones. Um, and to to say that it's a to say that it's like an actual card game is hard because there are aspects of it that are not card gamey at all, and I think that's the point. It's really nebulous, and it's very hard to describe, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it as well, but as you kind of do things with the cards, other things kind of happen out of nowhere, and it's up to you to figure out what those other things are and how they interact with the cards that you have. And there's yes. constantly things popping up, and it's, it's, it's trial and error on purpose, and I found that frustrating for the first hour or two, uh, but then once I kind of hit my first end state with my very first uh, attempt, the game then did something that I didn't expect. I expected it to be like, okay, start again. Now you understand this. Now see how far you can get with this understanding of the rules. That's not how it works. Once you hit your first end state, you then are given a choice of three different types of people to play. And the storyline kind of just continues. And it takes place after the end state of your first playthrough. And you start learning information about the character you were playing as before, and it starts tying into the story that you're telling now. Uh, so, for instance, the first play you play is a, kind of this guy who's kind of working this dead-end job, and he wants greater things. And my guy, he discovered a cult, um, and I was doing research towards that cult, but I was also trying to make enough money to keep myself afloat, and eventually I just ran out of money and I died um, because of injuries that I was uh, accruing at my kind of dead-end job from just doing menial labor. The next one, uh, my next playthrough, I'm playing as a detective, and the detective has case files on the person that just died, the person I just played. And now he's starting to go through those files while also working uh, and interviewing other people that were part of my cult. And he's starting to sift through what I discovered on my first playthrough. And you're learning more while still managing the same kind of mechanics that were introduced in the first playthrough. But now there's new stuff. And it's all trial and error, and it's really weird. And as you do things, weird symbols show up on the board. Um, like a like a like a stained moon shows up on the board when I did something, and it stays. And like this weird sound effect plays, and you're like, "The fuck is that? Why? What does that have to do with anything?" And uh, it's, I can see it being so frustrating to the point that it turns people off, and so interesting and vague that it has people hooked. And I feel like I'm erring on that side, where, like, mm -hmm. I want to play more, I want to see where this is going, but I understand the other side where it's like, this is too nebulous for the sake of being nebulous, I'm kind of done with it. It kind of just sounds like you're describing another Fallen London-style game. Which is the know? same dev. Yeah, again, so, so, like, I think that's... I, I mean, if people know what they're getting into, I, I'm sure it's, you know, they're all yeah. the happier about it, but... Every yeah, time... Really Everyone I've heard describe the game. Someone else in chat says that's not at all what the game is like. I got <laughs> I got an email from them. They're like, "Do you love Slay the Spire? Well, this game's for you." No, yeah. it's not like at Slay all. The Spire. Nope. Not even nope. remotely. That is a lie. And there's not this describes it. And chat's like, "It's a resource management game. Come on." There are aspects of resource management. <laughs> there are. There are aspects because you have to you have to manage the three main resources: your money, your health, and uh, and your passion. Um, and those go on cooldown the more you use them and you have to kind of use them wow. sparingly. But there are other things involved as well that are just weird mystery cards that will only be on your table for 20 seconds. And if you don't use it, it goes away. Cards that are there for two and a half minutes and you have time to use them, but you have to use them with other cards that you have. It's really weird, man. It's really, really bizarre. And that's what has me. Dude, I don't think the game is bad, but I hate it. <laughs> that's fair. I, that's I, I honestly think this that's is fair. one of those games where, like, I played it for like an hour, and people were like, you know, if you play it for like a few hours, you'll start to get it. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that because yeah. I don't like playing it at all. Mm -hmm. I think your enjoyment of the game, not you specifically, but in general, yeah. is like directly tied to your ability to just be unaware of what's happening and just accept that you know experimentation is going to be part of the game which on a logical level i would like to describe myself as but what it meant for me is after playing it for like an hour i had just been so confused i had no attachment to things where i was like i don't understand like if you drop a health card into your dreams after 45 seconds, that becomes a vitality. And then if you put two vitality cards into yeah. ambition, you get an extra health point. But I don't even know when I gain 
HP when I lose HP. Also, I'm doing my job, but my boss might be like a snake. I don't know, because he keeps slithering and making s sounds, and the, <laughs> the game's like, isn't that weird? And simultaneously, like, there, there's just so many different things going on simultaneously, and they deliberately cultivate this aesthetic of it all being mysterious and, and obscure, and it's all obfuscated from you to start with, um, that for me, I was just like, I just have not been enjoying it at all. Give me, it's like actually the opposite or the inverse of Slay the Spire, where in Slay the Spire, absolutely everything is detailed on screen mm -hmm. so that you know what's going to happen and you can make a decision based on that. This is like the exact opposite where it's like, you don't know what anything is, ha like everything that's happening is confusing and nothing you do matters to start with at least. Mm. What happened to your chair? It's still there. Is it broken? No, I got I a new one. I have the, I have this Herman Miller. Oh, nice. I'm not trying Upgrade. to brag or anything. No, yeah, yeah, that's nice. I think I think if you walk in a cult simulator expecting a game like Hearthstone or Slay the Spire, you're gonna. It's not. It's just not. It's, it is highly not. It is that. a weird mm -hmm. management game disguised as a card game with a layer of of confusion heavily placed on top of it on purpose. Sounds like that PR person is being a little cheeky. A little yeah, bit. Yeah. Fix on that. Yeah. Agreed. You're trying to pick up on the popular stuff a bit. I but again, though, I don't. I don't think it's bad. No, I it's not your style. I also hated Sunless Sea for yep. almost the exact same reason, where it felt like, you know, I'd play it for a couple of hours and I'd read some things where it was like, mm, and then a centipede crawled out of his ear, tasty. And I was like, I get it, but I just don't like it. Yeah. I also hated Sunless Sea, and a lot of it was due to the way that they made up random words in the endless text boxes that consist of about 80% of the game. Mm, yeah. yeah. Sorry, it's I had like no patience for that one. You have to have so much patience for those games. Like it's yep. so much reading and so much lore, and, and like you said, like it's so uh, obtuse for the sake of being obtuse. Sometimes, like it just really loves to make you think you have absolutely no idea what's going on, which isn't necessarily the most encouraging thing when you're trying to get into a new video game. I would, I, I honestly, because because uh, Nick, your tastes are pretty wide and varied. Uh, and you're willing to give games like this a shot. I'd be willing to see if, if you put in a few hours to see if it hooked you or if you sit on this side of hating it. Mm. Is yeah, there you... are there words in it? Because I don't yes. know how to read. There's a lot. <laughs> There's a reading. lot of words. It's like, yeah. No. There's a lot of words. Sorry, man. You thought you could get this far without Several reading. words? Yeah, it's true. Oh, man. I'm sorry, man. Damn it. Cool. All right. Well, that's Cultist Simulator. It is out. $20 on Steam right now. <laughs> I was just laughing because chat said that I don't like to read, and sometimes I don't, and sometimes I do. That's all. It's but just you like read that out of chat, though. You like words. You words. It's just the classic, like the streamers are insulting a game I like sort of response, right? Where yeah. like, I don't know, it's a lot of reading, and it didn't really grab me. And they go, "Oh no, reading! <laughs> I'm a big dum dum who sits in a chair and plays <laughs> video <laughs> games all day." Like, it's like, it, it, just because you don't like it, it doesn't mean we're stupid. It just it's it does, kind of, though. And it's just, it's the only one person out of 2,000 people watching right now. So it's not mm. like, uh, you know, it's not like everybody's saying it. I'm stupid it sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> I'm not stupid other times, though. I think that's just true for everybody. Like, we all vary from time to time. That being said, I do not like to read in most video games. <laughs> I love to read, but... In many video games, the writing is kind of bad. Well, know? when it makes up most of the gameplay, Speaking I think it's of, where I get put it's off. It's got to be strong if that's the case. Dude, it's really I beat be Detroit. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into that right now. Do you really want to do it? Dude. Yeah, yeah let's, uh, let's do what we've been playing for the last couple weeks or so now. and Then we'll, then we'll get into our uh, June game of the month, and then we'll talk uh, best of 2018 up to this point. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, do you want Detroit. me to? Do you want me to go there? All right. Spoilers, go Detroit. It's time yeah. for spoilers. Spoiler heavy. It's been a long time. I'm gonna lay it out there for all those who didn't see my stream. I fucking hated Detroit. <laughs> I thought it was horrible. Uh, the first third <laughs> of the game. Is it the worst Cage game? No, no, no. not okay. even close. Right. Not okay. even yeah. close. It's the best David Cage game since Indigo Prophecy, probably. Okay. Hey, look at that. Um, it is equally filled with plot holes, nonsense, and stupidity, and the writing is horrendous, and it just isn't 
it, it, it's it, again it just it the further the game went the more i was like well this scene exists because david cage wanted a scene that was like this and this scene exists because david cage really wanted a scene like that he wants a horror scene so we got a horror scene he wanted an action scene so we got a action scene we got a we he wanted a, a, a one of the the worst parts in the game is marcus is obviously jesus right that is his point in the game he is a metaphor for jesus christ yes there is a point where he's either walking or whatever, and an angelic choir starts to rise as he's giving a speech in a church with, to his followers surrounded by his 12 apostles. And I'm sitting there going, come on, man. Like, that is so, ha like, in your fucking face. There's another part, too, where he's scaling a building. He doesn't need to scale a building. There is an elevator he could have used. Yeah! He gotta, he gotta, wait he a minute! <laughs> I wanna talk about that! Why the fuck didn't they take the elevator? Because, they go, then, because they scale a building, they break through glass, climb out the window, climb back into a window, and then open the elevator door <laughs> for their two teammates. Why weren't they just on the elevator? Because you, then you couldn't get a big sign that said rise on it as they walk <laughs> past it outside because <laughs> David Cage wanted a, a, a thing. Oh. He probably simulated all the different points of action that go <laughs> yeah. on the way up, and he probably determined that one of the guards would have noticed. Oh, uh, you know what? I just, I think I just thought of it. Maybe you can only call the elevator from the top. Then how do the business that, people get up there? Is that how <laughs> elevators work? Sometimes <laughs> you can lock them that way, right? How do you ever get up there in the first place? They, like, they have to leave somebody up there no, after like, they build like the elevator, know. and then they just have Listen. to switch people. <laughs> you can have a key that allows you to call it from the bottom floor, but if you don't have that key, then you can't call it from the bottom floor. But if you call it from the top, you can still call it, because you have to be able to call it from the top. Okay, so, but they're androids, and the plot is completely malleable anyway. That's yes. what I mean, is, like, whenever, the, whenever any kind of response to criticism is like, well, maybe it's a unique elevator. It's like, yeah, well... He never, well, David Cage goes not, out of his way to explain... Just I'm trying to come to the defense of it, but I, I'm still mad that that's, like, the fucking lengths they went to do, to do that stuff. But anyway, yeah, go ahead, Mathis. My, my complaint overall is that David's writing is always bad. David Cage writes schlock, and he continues to write schlock but mm. he writes it in such a way that he he tries to ground it and he tries to make it realistic and epic so it's this this weird conflict of tone of like all this silly shit is happening but it's being presented in such a serious way where it just doesn't mesh at all and he mm. ruins his own stories throughout the whole game so the first like what the fuck moment for me was when all of a sudden out of nowhere Marcus Marcus has the power of wokeness like he can just touch an android yeah. and they are now woke and they now have free will they never explain where that comes from the virus but they never say that you can intuit it by his actions sure but the virus doesn't make any sense right. initially he has to touch them that's where you end your well yeah you're right about that the virus no I, is I agree it doesn't make any sense but I, the thing about the the elaborating virus is I think it's implying that he's touching them via not having you do the quick time event like I know mean? he's just walking down the street and like pointing at people but like it doesn't matter. I think they're just streamlining it so the player doesn't have to walk and touch everybody. Yeah, yeah. Is that true, though? Because I feel like that's not what David was doing. Um, I feel like he just got Wi-Fi powers all, out of nowhere. And then he what gives... What did David do? I don't know. I think his the point... It, well, no. What David did was try and tell a story about racism because that was obvious from the first 30 minutes. And then it just went out of control. Uh, but he did what he always does in all his games. He has a main character that's a Jesus figure, a main character that's a cop figure. The cop figure will be chasing the Jesus figure, and they'll join forces at some point. And then the third wheel character, who either gets involved or is pointless by the end of the game. Kara's story was pointless by the end of the game. Because David had to have a twist for the sake of having a twist that undermined her entire story. So, again, spoilers, Kara's story was the idea of can she and a human get along? Can she raise a human girl in such a way where she it doesn't matter that she's an android. She's still, uh, you know, she's a human and, and she's still, and, and Kara's a living thing and it doesn't matter. The last hour, that gets thrown out because Alice is an android. Yeah. And that's like the spoil, like that's, that's a twist. It's like, well, now Kara's entire story is gone. 
the like, way yeah. you reacted to finding that out was the exact same way I also reacted because I thought what they were implying was Kara was putting up a mental block to Me herself. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Isn't then it? all of a sudden, that's what it was? No, that was a different was Alice a, android. A different Alice yeah, model. That is true. Yeah, yeah. No, I know that. But I, I thought when Luther is like, "You just didn't want to see it," that he was implying that like. Oh, it's not, not that he was yeah, not that she was visually filtering it out, but yeah, that she yeah. was just willfully deluding herself, I guess. Yeah, I thought they were saying that she literally couldn't see the thing because yeah, her that's... programming didn't allow it, but it was just another Alice. But why no one else in the game world didn't tell that it was another Alice? That I can't explain. Well, yeah, it, it doesn't make it. It weirdly undermines the whole opening area with the dad and the daughter and all that other nonsense and. Um, and again, the world itself just doesn't make any sense, uh, the way it works. I like how, like, we went from no free androids to a couple hundred free androids, and now the U.S. has a, a civil war on their hands, according to... It the, all ramped up really fast. What did you do at the, the pivotal Marcus moment? Because I remember, I sang, I he can't had, remember... He had oh. another option that neither of us had. Oh. I kissed uh, North. Who, oh, I did have that option, but... Oh. I, and, and so they all lived. Every one of my main characters lived um at the end and it was dumb and whatever i hated north but they ended up wanting to bone anyway no matter no what. matter what no you matter what no i rebuked yeah. her you no, really? but, but really? she still I, loves you is what i dodged I mean. it <laughs> and then at Even, the end i lit us all on fire and were killed by shotgun yeah. that's what yeah. it was gotcha yeah she, we kissed and that was the end and they, they everybody lived uh, i saved hank uh, Hank and Connor uh, lived. Also, I had Connor, Connor push Hank off a building. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're like in the, like in the early game. Wow. No, not in the early game, in the late game. But that was oh, okay. Uh, um, I had a Hank dies moment that happened early in the game once. Connor once becoming time. Jesus Junior was fucking stupid. The fact that he could give the woke touch at the end, and then Dude. everybody he touched could give the woke touch, and it was just I like, can't where did this come we from? We didn't. Did we talk about the like post? resolution scene where they're like everything's fine and then yes. connor pulls out a gun yeah and he's oh my trapped God. in his own mind and is like <laughs> I pull out my gun <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to like find your way in to that the... snowy world to the obvious point in the yep. mind palace where well, you do... and then he just puts it away and everyone's like oh that's nobody connor. saw he it pulls his gun out and, and can i point out in that exact scene where marcus is giving the speech and there's a rousing cheering and they pan over the crowd and none of the crowd is moving they are just standing there <laughs> and then they flip it to his side and three people up front are cheering and everybody is just dead still that scene is just like it's so ham-fisted em well forced. it's emblematic of david cage <laughs> yeah which is Hey, wouldn't it be cool if like there's yes. this really tense moment where Connor pulls out a gun, but then like he overcomes it, and then it's just like it fits. It doesn't make any sense, is what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. But it's all like these sixteen-year-old ideas of like, and then yes. he pulls out a gun. Yeah, twist, and, twist, yeah, twist. It's just twist. nonstop. Yeah, exactly. It's always like, you know, every fifteen minutes, there's got to be something insane that happens. Or, you know, what's the point? That's the end of every David Cage game. Like, Indigo Prophecy, the last 15 minutes of that game is, like, three twists out of literal yep. nowhere. Where it's just like, mm. oh, okay, sure. And then North says, hey, here's a detonator to a nuclear <laughs> yes! weapon we hijacked. And you choose whether or not to blow up the nuclear. And then Connor <laughs> pulls out a gun and he's going to shoot Marcus. And then he does or he doesn't. And then, <laughs> also, like... I am Connor. <laughs> 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 Oh, God. And the, the whole, I remember during that boat fight, uh, and, and the whole thing is like, we're not terrorists. And at the end, they blow the boat up with people yeah. on it anyway. And you're like, but we're not terrorists. Um, there's I hate just that your, your Luther ending got freaking forced by you not going on the bus. Yes. You mm -hmm. apparently can't save everyone if you make that decision, which right. in, in the game's mind, it thinks you're making, it wants you to make the most optimal decision, which is stealing from a family. But yeah. they, if you don't steal from the family because you think you're taking the moral high ground, you, you get punished for it. People. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I, I, I will pitch it here because I, I think I've pitched it on my, all my other streams. The best game, like what I can see what he's trying to do here and an easier way to do it, in my opinion, is cut Kara. I think we've all said it. Cut Kara yeah. Marcus out completely. Yeah, but I know cut, exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Cut all the androids out. Androids don't exist in this world. Connor is the only android and he's a prototype. Yeah. And he is rented to the police force or whatever. And through working with Hank, 
Connor discovers the only way to get the job done sometimes is to not follow the rules and play dirty to get, you know, to save the people that need to be saved. It goes against his rule system, it conflicts with him, and then at the end of at the end of the story, Connor learns identity and self-worth and maybe is alive and kind but of you know, a nebulous. It, it would be fucked. Like but it'd be a but it, it, the but concept the is so much movie. better, but there would be a scene where Connor falls in love with a human and <laughs> with, he has to uh, decide. Yeah. Connor and Sumo. <laughs> and he still they has would, he still has that find mind some palace. Way to fuck it up. And then like she would fall and trip herself and she would be an android or something like that, and they would never <laughs> explain it. And it is, would, I it my version of it is I would only want the Kara story and it would not be Alice as an android, and your decision making affects how she grows up. Yeah, I think, then, that, I think that would work too. Why did Alice have to be an android, dude? Thank that's you. that. That. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. It's just so much better and saner if she's a human she's being a, being taken. No reason. And there's the story of motherhood where the android is taking care of the human being. Like yeah. that's yeah. a better concept than just throwing in the oh, and then she's an android. Yeah, yeah. What? and I even think then it just raises all these dumb questions, like the obvious one, which is. Why does Todd live alone with two androids that he kicks the shit out of? And everyone goes, well, he's sad because his family left him. So he bought robots <laughs> to beat and smoke drugs around? While, like, by the just... way, while, remember, while you're Kara, you see his underpaid bills of like, oh, he's $200 yeah, over on yeah. this, no, $300 like, over this. They, they but he buys that. almost $2,000 worth of androids. They, they cover that with the idea that those are cheap models and he's got like a refurbed android. But the point is it just doesn't even have to exist yeah no like the, the, the fact story. that he he buys two things to beat yeah to beat just doesn't make any sense and and i even think there's a good version of a of a marcus version of this game out there where he doesn't have woke touch and his literal is like he breaks free and there's a few androids in the world or whatever and he just through challenging them and talking to them and like learning what it is to be an individual can help them break free as well and it just get rid of the weird magic shit like you, you're he's yeah. guising magic as technology, but the, yeah. the technology doesn't make any sense. And in, in a game where he goes out of his way to beat you in the face to explain how things work and, and like what he's trying to tell in the story, he leaves the most important shit as just magic, and it's frustrating because that's just what he does in all the other games. And I'm so I'm it's just it's so it's so yeah. frustrating. The game frustrated me the more and more I played it, and I just it's it's the same story of every David Cage game too, where like when it comes out, it gets glowing reviews and then you go out a couple months and you start thinking about the game you're like none of that made any sense dude i'm at the point where i'm for the first week i liked detroit but it was only because i had only played the, the first, first part of the game yeah, the first third or you so. know the first couple of seasons a lot yeah we were riding high on detroit when we first talked about it it's the fact that like when it came out it's like at the high 70s or low 80s i think consensus yeah. like some critics played through the whole game and are like it's a little a buggy, but it'll affect you emotionally. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I don't understand. It actually is close to unfathomable to me. Yeah. It it, it made me real mad. <laughs> it just made it. But I got a lot of laughs out of it because there are just moments in that game where you're like, really? All right, cool. Whatever. Like, it's just I mean, silly. I still, like, despite itself, it's still enjoyable to me in some respects. Like, I'm not playing it anymore, but the time that I did spend it and I enjoyed... But I'm with you completely on all this stuff about how it's just the the narrative and the decisions sometimes and storytelling are baffling. Like there's, I, I mentioned this on the show already, but the one instance that just stands out to me as I cannot take this seriously anymore is in the police station when they're interrogating the uh, defunct android who stabbed his owner. And uh, they get a little heated. Connor begins to get into a tussle with one of the other cops. And that cop pulls a gun on Connor. And first of all, that's kind of oh, ridiculous. Because, like, okay, you're going to shoot shot Connor. me in the head. He did? He actually shot yeah, Connor. Yeah, died. Yeah, Connor can die from, from that's that. That's how... You guys don't know what it's like, okay? That's how it is <laughs> in America. In America is that <laughs> like, you I mean, can just shoot your gun in the interrogation room. And it's but go a step beyond that because, with, like, that alone is insane. But then, like, after that, Hank pulls a gun on the cop. Yes, yes. And he's like, point your gun. <laughs> what the fuck are you going to do, Hank? Are you going to shoot a cop in the interrogation room because he was, was going to kill your android which at that point how makes, does that work but at that point also makes no sense for hank because hank hates androids at that point why would he give a shit if an android gets shot yeah he exactly has no it attachment uh to it at all yeah 
I lost three Connors in my playthrough. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> That's a lot of Connors. I, I thought I was going to kill them in every single scene that Connor showed up, but it ended up ending at one point. I oh, will shit. agree. I actually, like, it's one of those weird things where, like, you know, I think we've all had experiences where we've seen a movie that's like an eight out of ten, but is kind of boring, and I never want to see it again. Mm. And then like something like Mortal Kombat Annihilation is like actually a two out of ten, but I could <laughs> but watch it once a week until I die, <laughs> maybe from watching it once a week. But like, <laughs> this is one of those situations where, on an intellectual level, I recognize I cannot recommend Detroit unless you're in the position we're in, where you can kind of play it for yeah. laughs yeah. with an audience. Yeah. But yeah. like. The mission or the the game itself is enjoyable. Like I enjoyed most of the time that I played through the game. It's unique without a doubt, and there's never a dull moment. Yeah, without a doubt. So <laughs> like I, I I have to say that it's like a five because there's so much of it that is. I'd give it a six. I'd honestly give it a that's, six. That's fine. Really, I, I mean, like on, four, I still think four, on a technical five. level, it's like really, Oh, it's, it's an impressive feat. Like it looks good. Game. And then the number of endings and outcomes that you can have that branch off yeah. of like these nodes I, is incredible. I just yeah. wish, I guess I just wish David went, um, uh, like could choose between like, do you want this to be like, uh, you know, self-aware in a way you know what you're doing or not? Because once he started like really trying to ground this in reality with like news things talking about a World War Three and like fight like mm. the economy and all this, stuff. he's like the nods are so stupid. But too. yeah, yes. but like he's desperately yeah. trying to root it in reality. So when he when you do that for me anyway, like I'm trying to see this game in a in a I guess a realistic lens, and then the world just starts to begin to fall apart because a lot of stuff that happens isn't realistic. Like that whole point where. Do you remember the, the the scene where Marcus is busting into the store and freeing all the androids and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. That whole thing didn't make any sense to me because it, when you're done freeing the droids, you start tagging things with a hologram that sticks to nothing. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Then the yeah, cops show up and all of a sudden somebody runs around the corner. You hear like two gunshots and you turn around and you have like nine androids dead and one cop who is on the ground with his hands up because he's being surrounded by androids. And you're like, how did this happen? Like, how did any of this happen when you he obviously only shot, like, two bullets, and uh, now you have, like, nine dead androids? That's an accurate cop, dude. He killed yeah. five with one shot and four with the other. That's Well, amazing. that actually also happened during the fight in the boat. Like, uh, as, as Marcus, you're fighting through, and you charge one cop, and he fires off a bullet. And uh, as you, like, knock him to the ground, you turn around, he killed, like, three androids. And you're like, but he only shot one time. How did that happen? Do you happen? think that, like, they have bullets that are attracted to androids? That's the <laughs> Maybe, yeah, they're curving the bullets around. Da, 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 da. Yeah. The cops are the dudes from Wanted, and they're doing the... Exactly, yeah. I always forget what fucking movie that is, but that's the only thing that I remember about it, is that they yeah. curve the bullet in the trailer. It's just... I was just got sick of the whole like okay now this android has this power for the sake of David being able to say to do this in this scene and that yeah. and they just got ramped up and he just became godly. We need to get him on the show at some point. I guess I would so not. That would not go him. well. <laughs> I just well, think, I thing, honestly think David like, Cage should, is like you should get the Connor voice actor on the show. And I'm mm. like I have said very bad things about a project that he probably spent like two years working yeah. on. Like I get it. We have said repeatedly that he is like he's the, the best star. part of the game. game. But Without how would you feel if you're you know you spend like you dedicated two years of your life to making would, a but, movie? But the, and everyone think... was like the movie's a piece of shit, but you're good. You're good. I would love on. to see. You. I don't know, man. David I wouldn't. Cage, I wouldn't say yes to it. I have said this not. openly, and this is my opinion and my opinion alone. But I think David Cage is kind of a hack when it comes to writing. I don't think he can write good stories. Um, and none of his games tell a good story. They're all full of plot holes and, and nonsense, and it doesn't make any sense. And Beyond Two Souls is probably his worst piece of work of all time. Um, I yeah. just he needs Beyond he needs a no man. He needs somebody to sit there and go no no no. Well, don't do this. Don't do about, that. Let's just reclassify David from being someone who creates high art to someone who creates kind of bad popcorn flicks that we can put up. Yes. Well, he's he's pretty much. But he thinks like, he's know, not that. That's he's going problem. through yeah. a career resurgence, but he's basically like M. Night Shyamalan four or five years yes. ago. Yes, that's where right. Every movie, you know, it's, the concepts are always there. The concepts are always like, wouldn't it be weird if, you know, this I remember was this. watching like the Kara trailers back in like 2014 and mm. the pe people were genuinely excited for it. And yeah, like premise wise, it was it had a good foundation. Yeah. I had fun the whole way through the game. I just thought the story was pretty bad. But, like, I, I don't see yeah, I'm with reason you. to even draw it out this much. It was just 
it was a an above average game from a production value standpoint and technologically it did some cool stuff i think it's very cool for the sake of everyone that plays it is going to have a slightly different experience not yeah. transformationally different but you're going to have something to talk about at least and that's kind of as far as the conversation needs to go for me like i would recommend it for that as long as you're not expecting a real story yeah uh, I don't know if I would at this point, but I am still, you know, more positive than negative overall. But yeah, I'm with you. I think we've taken oh, it quite a bit. The graffiti further. section sucks ass, though. It I does. Like it's it. awful. Like that part at all. <laughs> Anytime they do like a real game thing, it just falls flat on its face. But like, yeah. you know. And the simulating animation part also should have been removed from the game. Mm. Like, press square to see if this is the right way. No, press up. Now press square. <laughs> no, that's not gameplay. Why yeah. does... They spent so much time animating that. You could have saved somebody hours of work Dude, for no yeah. reason. You jumped in here trying to come to the defense, and then all of a sudden you're right no, here like, with us. Were, like, and then fuck them for this other thing, too. There were stupid elements in it. But yeah. ultimately, I still had a good time with it. <laughs> Okay, anyway, uh, is there any other games you guys want to talk about, things you've been playing for the last uh, couple weeks or so before we get into June game of the month here? Uh, I played... Oh, yeah, you had one more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I played uh, The Hell with Hell. Yeah. To Hell with Hell, rather. It's hell uh, hell. A, a little bullet hell nuclear throne style roguelite where you play as a lady who goes to hell and has to kill demons. Uh, <laughs> it plays very much like nuclear throne, actually, but the main... Uh, twist mechanic to it is that there's masks you find and i think it's got over 100 weapons which i actually didn't uh, expect either and Wait, what's the name again sorry the hell with hell the hell with hell the okay to hell with hell oh to hell with hell okay uh it's not actually released yet it's gonna come out in early access in a like another five days or something like that mm -hmm. uh and the main thing about it is you get these masks that can stack and they let you turn into other characters so they act as like buffer life bars that have special abilities to them. Um, and then when you lose one of the masks, then you drop down to the one you had prior to that. Um, and then between levels, it lets you get perks like you can a nuclear throw and you get a choice of four different like mutations, uh, which let your character get stronger. It seems to have a lot of levels to it, uh, but I found the very beginning of the game to be way too easy. Uh, and I don't know if the whole game is finished as far as like the campaign goes. It, it may just like end at some point, like a lot of these kind of roguelites do, but I didn't get that far. Mm -hmm. um, I started out not being super hot on it, but then once I got to the part where the challenge actually ramped up a bit, I thought it was actually pretty good. Um, and as it stands right now, I don't know if I would recommend going out and grabbing it or anything when it comes out, but keep your eye on it because I think it could evolve quite a bit into something at least worthy, uh, worthy of looking at and giving a try to, uh, especially if you're a fan of Nuclear Throne. It's, it's very much that style. To yeah, hell right hell. Cool. Very nice animations as well, and I got into the music. Yeah, uh, it looks so. pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, this developer, are they Lazarite Games? Familiar with them at all? Or I don't mm -hmm. think I've seen anything they've done. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, cool. That's to hell with hell. Uh, anything else y'all have been playing? We can get into June game of the month here, I think. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Um, well, I mean, yeah, that's also going to be kind of a tricky one because June was a bit, a bit dry. Uh, but. Uh, we did have Wreckfest officially came out in June, so that's up there for consideration if you'd like. Also, uh, Vampire did come out. I don't think... Did any of us play that? Mathis, you played Mathis it. Mathis played it. 14 yeah. hours of Vampire. Damn, yeah. Okay, so there you go. Uh, Jurassic World Evolution also came out in June. Uh, Mario Tennis Aces, for what it's worth. Uh, and then The Crew 2. Uh, not a lot else. Unravel 2 as well. You know, I, that actually may end up uh, retroactively being my game of the month and once I uh, get the chance to play that with Elise. I'm looking forward to that because we really like the first one. Um, anybody got a standout for them right now? I think for me, uh, it probably goes to Vampire. I think yeah. while it's their first real RPG attempt, this company, uh, Don't <laughs> Nod, they did uh, Remember Me and uh, they did uh, Life is Strange. Um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not called Vampire? I thought it did, but I got yelled at whenever I said vampire. So, oh, is it vampire also? Yeah, okay, I think it's vampire. I bad. think it's vampire. Vampir. But mm -hmm. regardless, uh, I think it's a very good first attempt at RPG. It's definitely a little rough around the edges, but not so much where it's not enjoyable. Um, it's kind of like Bloodborne light combat, where it's all about offense, none, not really about defense. You only fight a few enemies at a time, and you're constantly trying to position yourself around them and look for their patterns. 
Um, the story gets a little tell don't show sometimes where there's like 15 minute conversations between you and a character. That's the big drawback I've heard is yeah. it's very wordy. It really loves to just tell you the plot instead of showing mm. you the plot. And that kind of really bothered me towards like the end, but it's pretty good. It's not a terrible game. And if you're, that's your style. And if you like that kind of, um, subject matter, uh, a little bit horror esque 1800s vampire style, mm -hmm. I, th I think it's worth checking out. It definitely has moments where you're like, okay, cool. I feel like a vampire. Uh, I want to, I'm going to give mine in a specialized case again, much like I did last year for, uh, the Crimson Court for Darkest Dungeon, but, mm. uh, having played a ton of the Color of Madness DLC for Darkest Dungeon, I kind of want to give that a nod because I've been loving this one too. It ended that, uh, or added that endless mode, uh, with that new area of the farmstead that, uh, also adds in mercenary characters that you can grab from the stagecoach. So, uh, those are level six characters. Those are the max level characters with everything unlocked, all the skills and all their gear and stuff. And uh, it's really just a great idea in general, especially for a player like me who having started a new estate with this uh, DLC, I can now only like maybe 20 or 30 hours into this campaign, uh, go out on all these max level missions into the farmstead and, you know, like get into the in-depth uh, max level stuff right away almost. And it's kind of a fun new uh, addition. Uh, obviously, too, the endless mode itself is a welcome uh, addition for me in particular. Being a Darkest Dungeon content creator, that's fine with me. You go ahead and add like, that endless mode in. I'll be okay with that. Um, but it was uh, everything I've seen out of it has been great. So that's. Isn't it long enough right. without an endless mode? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> they added a new mode before that into the game to make it shorter for people. But now for people like me, we've got all we want. Huh. Is that going to be the last uh, expansion for them? It probably will be, yeah, almost certainly. In fact, they're uh, all all their focus right now. I think is on uh, Project Two, which has not really been Talked announced or anything yet. yet. Yeah, brightest dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in the chat from yesterday. Hey, Bear, you emo. Why don't you play brightest dungeon? Stop being so oh. sad. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Got him. Mm, have you heard of this game called um, The Binding of Isaac? <laughs> That's a good voice. But that's the actual <laughs> name of it. Have you heard, I think you now should play a little indie game called The Binding of Isaac. <laughs> mm. I bet you might like Spelunky Bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> the Gungeon update comes out on the 19th now. Yeah. Oh, they so pushed it? Chasm, Mother Gunship, and the Enter the Gungeon update are all next week. Wait, Chasm's wow. finally out? It's coming out on July 31st, I thought. Yeah, yeah it is. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's coming out on the 16th scoop. for backers. Ooh, shit. Finally, 17 years later. Yeah, dude. That's been in yeah. development since I was in the womb. <laughs> All right. So my game of the month is Realm Royale for showing me that I can still enjoy a battle royale. Oh, uh, wow. You thought what? it was going to be a joke, but then it wasn't. I pulled All it. All right. Um. I went back and played a couple hours of it with Justin, and unfortunately, everybody got good at it, so we didn't win any games. Mm -hmm. And apparently, it's got a lot of balance issues right now. But I'm willing to stick it out and come back to it every few months and see if maybe it's more enjoyable. You know, right. I like the loop of it. It's real simple. It's not overcomplicated. There's no building. You know, the most complex thing you do is hit X to make the loop go away, and I kind of like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. From Royale. It's, it's all right, actually. Cool. Ryan, what about you? It's got to be breakfast. breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I've been playing it off cam. I've been playing it on Corey's stream. We've been playing it on the NLSS. I really like it. And, you know, politically, like, I'll take any opportunity to vouch for a game that actually makes early access look good, mm -hmm. even though even through the year 2045, people will still be like, but Daisy, And I'll be like, yeah. But it's you know, yet another feather in the cap for – early access actually working mm, if people yeah. are paying attention and uh beyond that it's just very good sweet well there we go that's our june game of the month and uh let's take that directly into our uh best of 2018 thus god far conversation god of war it's and done. i'm done yeah i think god of war is where i'm at too <laughs> god of war is really really good but there are other games that no, have come there out aren't. this year. Shut up. That's not Many true. people are sleeping on Into the Breach, which is low-key one of the top ten games of the year so far. I agree. 
No. I can give you that, maybe. Celeste, maybe. I don't know if that so, one is. Celeste is also very good. I don't know um, if any of them beat God of War, but... I thought it was give... made everybody all mad, and then they stopped playing it. Uh, if they were terrible at the game, perhaps. Oh. Uh, Into the Breach situation. is a beautiful and perfect experience. <laughs> there's some people in chat saying Monster Hunter World. I'm excited for it, but I am going to play it in a week when it comes on PC. So I want to give a big, fat, nasty shout out to uh, Shadow of the Colossus remake because mm. it was pristine and everything I wanted it to be. It was so your choices uh, are DLC for a game that came out years ago <laughs> and a remake of a game. You got it, man. <laughs> but it was a remake of what I consider to be the best video game of all time. So yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm just fucking with you. Well, actually, not anymore. Now that God of War oh. came out. Circle oh, that's true. Subnautica did come out of early access this year. Oh, oh yeah. Subnautica, Subnautica is on the list. Incredible. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, again, many people are sleeping on many Wizard sleeping. of Legend, which they played two times and then decided that it was not good enough for them to spend I, any says more the time man with. Who's I sleep. Who played Cultus for an hour and decided it wasn't worth it. Yeah, but I didn't like Cultus is the thing. I yeah, but like I didn't Wizard like of Legend. Legend. <laughs> yeah, but Wizard of Legend is good. Is it? <laughs> Wait, so it, the argument is Circular if you like it, there should be a trend of people playing it. <laughs> yeah. No, the argument is Wizard of Legend, 88% positive reviews. Cultist yeah. Simulator, 70% Also 88% positive, positive, positive reviews. <laughs> <laughs> Can you play Subnautica? Because like, I like yeah. Subnautica a lot. I've watched a couple people play Subnautica. I may do it on a Sunday stream at some yeah. point. It might be the best survival game I've played. I... Oh, it's a survival game? Yes, yeah. but not... Never but it's a narrative-driven survival game. And you can play yeah, the mode yeah. where the survival aspects are turned off. I read the spoilers already, so how much yeah. does that... Why do you nah, I mean, like, that's Because it's my life, not your life. <laughs> oh, I want you to play Soma, and then you read the spoilers of that, too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now he knows what happened in it. There's Yo, a DLC key, coming out, though, so I'm excited. People are sleeping on, and they're not really sleeping, they've just Minecraft. forgotten about it. Vermintide 2. Are sleeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Vermintide 2 is a great game. That should be on there. Mm -hmm. Far Others... Cry 5 I liked a lot. Boo. Yeah. Eh. I, had fun, I had fun with Far Cry 5 for, like, I was having a great time with it, and then I just immediately was bored with it. I don't know what. Yeah, I got real tired of the constant road conundrums every. Yeah, season. I think that, it was like kind of killed the game for I, me. Actually, there was yeah. no downtime. It was just always up here, just constantly. Mm. Perhaps I, Frosted Punk. Frostpunk was great. Frostpunk, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not for me personally, but I know that people were. were Mathis, you were riding high on that. Yeah, for a I bit, think right? Frostpunk's a phenomenal game. Uh, I, like that I know there's a few others that we're forgetting. <sighs> Not agony. Nope. <laughs> Worst uh, games. Runner Runner Three, I think, is good. Yeah. I don't know if it is like on the top of the year or anything, but it was definitely good. Battletech, is... I think, is good. Oh right, yeah, Battletech. And uh, actually added updates to like just fast forward combat and stuff now. So if you yeah. don't want to watch it, you can just like have them do the fast animations. I wish I was into it, but I'm very not. I know. Mm. Descenders is very good. Dead in Vinland is very good. Yes. Would you say a way out is worth a mention? It's worth a mention <laughs> if you have a friend that you can play it with and you understand that it is also kind of a schlocky game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, I still... It's almost detroit -y It in is, the sense that, close. Yeah, I don't think as, like, a piece of art, it's very good. Great. But as a game, it's kind of a fun time to play through once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I would vouch for sense. it. Like, I think, I think if you got... Considering that the game is essentially half price because one copy is two copies, I think that that's that's pretty good. Going, that's like the little things like going into the hospital to see your child born, but taking a break to balance on wheelchairs against each other. Yeah, <laughs> play some Connect Four. Play some and... Connect Four. You're like, I know my wife's, you know, had a baby, but just hold up. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'll vouch for They Are Billions. I think that might be the most uh... fun I've had playing a strategy game in a long time. Great. A lot of people uh, say you know, when that's out, like when it's done, because I think it's still not ready yet. That went big on Twitch for like a couple weeks there, and then yeah, it's kind of dropped off. off. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say though. Pills of Eternity Two was great. I don't think any of us got. I haven't gotten it. into that at all. No, that's I know that's huge though. I know a lot of people are loving that. I think that'll be a stream game for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's too, too you know, I don't, I'm actually surprised with this myself. I might actually even go back and play some more of it. But uh, Nino Kuni Two did come out, and I started that up, 
back mm-hmm. when it came out and then just i think it was oh that was probably it was like a month before god of war so it was likely that that just right preceding it your uh your pinball game with bugs your yeah game. yoku yoku's island express i still i still think that's a good game it's you know i i again i reel back my hollow knight comparisons fully but <laughs> especially now being able to play hollow knight on the switch i'm like oh yeah no this <laughs> this is definitely not at all close to be fair but, i kind of saw through him when you made him too i just didn't I know yeah you don't want to discourage me i appreciate that. i feel like we're just going through games that we really like for 2018 but i'm also going to say uh, i'm probably alone in this of the four of us because i don't think anybody else played it but kingdom come deliverance was a surprise to me yeah i, I liked I just, it a lot there were clear issues with it and that it was really, a euro jank dog and like yeah. by your own admission and i, I couldn't yep. get past that yeah if you can't then that's fair that's understandable mm-hmm. this is DLC, DLC coming, coming out. out that looks really good too yeah i was I'll actually encouraged it. by that yeah i'm definitely gonna check it out mm-hmm Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Yep. Yeah. Very yeah. solid. Uh, too. Nobody stayed playing it here uh, for more than a few days, but it's really good. If they could make it, but make it not a fighting game, <laughs> I might play more. Kind of point. And what are you <laughs> I know. for? Exactly. Like, I was just going, look, it's the first time we're going to be able to play an art game on the NLSS, and then we didn't. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> if they make, like, a game that's as good as Dragon Ball Fighter Z, but it's not a fighting game. What are you even asking? Right, so, what like, what that? exactly are you looking for? <laughs> like, a really, really good game where you don't fight. <laughs> Have you seen Dragon Ball Z? Because that's all the show is. It doesn't is. have to be Dragon Ball. It doesn't have to be Z. <laughs> so you want a wholly different game, a new IP. Does it have to be a video game? Can we just watch an episode it of it? It does <laughs> have to be a video game. Oh, okay. fuck. Yo, uh, wait a minute. I saw one and I had forgotten about it. Wait a minute. Uh, sea of Thieves. No, it's obviously <laughs> not Sea of Thieves. Uh, Kirby Bear. Star Allies. That game is bad. Yeah. There's a lot of bad games I'm not mentioning. Yeah. Like, for example, yeah. I am not mentioning Moonlighter because I think I the like moon- Moonlighter. I was I so like riding high on like Moonlighter Moonlight. in the beginning, and then I was like, and then my interest is like, and I'm bored. <laughs> it's just, fine. It's got problems, but it's fun. I like it. I like Moonlighter that. is better than Kirby. I will yes. give you that. Oh, yes. oh fuck yeah. What I, what I was going to say is actually not that relevant, but I was going to go back to... Um, Monster Hunter World is definitely also on my list, even though I know you said you brought it up earlier and I did not interject. I should have interjected and said it is good, but I understand why you're waiting. Yes. I'm, it's, it's Now, people said it's a month from now, August 19th, which is fine. I'm excited for it when it hits PC, then I'll dive <laughs> in. Mm-hmm. I can't think of anything else. Yeah, I mean, we got uh, Super Mega Baseball 2. Give that another mention. Oh, yeah, that's on the well. list. Absolutely yeah. on the list. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but, you know... This minute. Oh, not yeah. on my list. No, I, I forgot about that. I don't, I don't think I even actually played it. No, I didn't play it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you there. It just occurred. Yeah, no. but it did come out this year, though. Uh, did you even play that, Nick? Yeah, I beat the whole thing in one sitting. I loved it. Right. No, yeah, I remember because you were. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as oh, it no, came I out, play... I just booted it up and I played the whole game in one go. I remember now. Yeah, minute was cute. I mean, it was cute. I like that. Um, yeah, I think that's just about all. Or unless there's anything from yeah. chat that we're missing as well. I don't think there's anything. That was, it was just for us to consolidate our ideas. We weren't necessarily yeah, yeah. saying all of those games were game of the year. It was right, just so right. we can, like have the info to go back to. Yeah, no, no declarations yet. Just a bit of a review, a review. Cool. Okay. Well, that'll do it then. Well, uh, well that... Suffice to say, we'll uh, wrap up the first half of the year, I suppose. I suppose. I suppose. And uh, I want to announce real quick, we're going to take a break uh, for Roundtable. We're going to take a month-long break here and be back on August 17th for a myriad of reasons. we got travel and we got uh, folks coming by and whatnot. We're all so. going to be very busy for a little while. Yes, yes. So uh, we saw fits, uh, especially because, you know, this is a bit of a dead time anyway in the summer. There's not a lot of stuff happening uh but uh this works out so expect us back on august 17th we won't be here for the next four weeks uh, for the next four fridays we will be gone back august 17th for the next round table live i uh, appreciate y'all affording us the ability to do so and we appreciate of course your support your patronage your viewership whatever it may be thank you very much for uh tuning in and supporting the show and thank you much for uh or thank you very much for watching this week as well of course uh here on twitch.tv slash roundtable podcast not forgetting anything right i feel like i'm forgetting something right now but i think that pretty much covered it as far as the uh 
break goes. Just much yeah, longer. So. Good to go. Uh, yeah. So thank you very much for watching. Twitch.tv slash Roundtable Podcast. We, uh, as mentioned several times, we'll be back on August 17th at 3 p.m. Pacific uh, for the next show. And you can catch the VOD over on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash B-A-E-R-T-E-F, if you'd like to watch that. Uh, thank you very much to our Patreon supporters as well over on patreon.com slash roundtable where you can uh, pledge a few dollars a month and support the show. I should have logged into it prior to the thing here. Hold on. Do you have the uh, Twitch subscribers up per chance? Nope, nope, yeah, I don't. Uh, but I can see if I can get it up real quick. Let's race. Who's going to get there first? Ah, damn it. I need a two-factor. Yeah. <laughs> nah, That's I'm going to be right. screwed. I am in to the subscribers. Oh, okay. All right, you give me the uh, subs. Let me just uh, filter it real quick. So mm -hmm. uh, it's only going to be subs. There we go. Merch. We don't have any merch. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, the Duke of Poops. Thank you so much for the subscription. Blue yeah. Cheese Bois, Ice Cold X, Toxic333, Cold Iron, Big Wooden Dong, Axe the Dragon, Light Teb, Guy Fieri's Pepperoni Areolas, and Sean13013. <laughs> Thank you guys. Much appreciated. Oh, I, lo I, I got oh, that. I like Guy Fieri's That's pepperoni areolas is a fucking phenomenal name. Thank you very much to our Patreon supporters as well over on patreon.com slash roundtable. That includes Dork Lord, Julian Avalsgaard, Jonathan Graham, Scrotty119. Ryan, I got an email from him about how to pronounce his name and I started to read it and I didn't finish it and <laughs> didn't read the part where he says how to pronounce his name and That's I'm the worst peak person in the world. And I'm Twitch sorry. streamer right there. Look, I read the email, Ryan, and I'm sorry. Thank you for your support. Support. I appreciate it. Uh, Rucario, actually, I didn't read the emails. So that's clearly <laughs> happened. Rucario gets squashy. Uh, Brizzle Brit Mediocrity is Justin Samurfet, Cowboy Chemist, Eric Schooley, Stephen Aoki, James Pete, Peter Simison, Ellis Spice, John Kalchik, O Thomas Games BR, Jakar Samson, Tox to Wall, Kulnar, Colby Klein, Oren Salzman, Miss Scare of Logan Ray. Thank you all very much for your support over on patreon.com slash roundtable. Oh man, it's been a minute since I saw five o'clock on the uh, on the screen there round table we did it boys we did it good old-fashioned two-hour show thanks for watching everybody we'll see you in a month goodbye goodbye, goodbye.